morning, everybody. It is 8.30. We will call this morning's meeting to order for Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. Our first item is the approval of the agenda. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Commissioner Mojo, second by Commissioner Gross. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carried. Citizens to be heard. Do we have any citizens to be heard this morning? Uh, nothing, Mr. Chair. Nothing online? Okay. <clears throat> we'll move to the approval of the payment of bills and vouchers. Move to approve. The second. Motion by Commissioner Gross, second by Commissioner Ebbinger. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carried. We'll move to approval of the minutes from July 13th. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Ebbinger, second by Commissioner Cayley. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carried. Next, we have a, a recognition today, and it's a proclamation for county staff. And uh, I think this will be a well-deserved proclamation. So, Steve, do you want to start off? Sure. It? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it is an exciting day here at Clay County, and not only just Clay County, but uh, but uh, for different counties across the state. Well, we certainly recognize that uh, our employees every day are the backbone of, of what we do here. Uh, this board sets up the the goals and, and the guidelines and direction and, and without them we couldn't carry out carry forward those and so uh, we're fortunate today to have the opportunity to to uh, have a special acknowledgement uh, for our employees uh, earlier this month as you as you may recall governor walls uh, proclaimed that july 27th would be county staff appreciation day uh, again this proclamation is is in recognition for the resiliency and hard work and dedication uh, that our staff have provided during uh, during the, the COVID pandemic and working uh, working with our community to make it safer, uh, both during the pandemic and moving forward. So our departments, when we look over the last year, our departments went from tweaking how they did services really to changing completely the model of service uh, to meet that standard. And I think the testament for me uh, during this whole process was is during the, the times that we were uh, shut down by appointment, uh, restricting some, some visits, I didn't get one complaint. And I think that really is that testament to the employees and the work that they did. And so uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I would yield to the All commission. right. Thank you. That's a good recap. Um, Commissioner Gross, would you like to start off the proclamation for us, please? Whereas county staff serve as the cornerstone of this community, dedicating their time, skills, and expertise for the benefit of their neighbors, and... Whereas county staff went beyond expectations, taking personal risks to continue delivering essential services to the citizens of our county during the COVID-19 pandemic, and... Whereas, in addition to their regular duties, many county staff were called upon and accepted new and challenging responsibilities during the, pandem during the pandemic, such as expediting the distribution of thousands of dollars in economic recovery appropriations, empowering the survival of our local business community, successfully managing a de deluge of mail-in ballots in an unprecedented federal election, and retooling local public health education outreach to flatten the curve. And Whereas although the state has turned the corner on the COVID-19 pandemic, county staff continue exemplary work, assisting with recovery through vaccination rollouts and preparing for the American Rescue Plan's multi-year recovery effort. And whereas the work of the of county staff over the past year and a half have kept the doors of the county open to our community and our community safer, healthier and productive throughout months of unprecedented global transition and Whereas President Svey and the Board of Association of Minnesota Counties requested the Office of Governor Walls and Lieutenant uh, Governor Flanagan to proclaim July 27, 2021 as County Staff Appreciation Day, and their request was granted. 
Now, therefore, we, the Clay County Board of Commissioners, proclaim July 27th, 2021 as County Staff Appreciation Day and extend our thanks to the staff of our county and express deep gratitude for their commitment to excellence in public service during the COVID-19 pandemic. All right. We, we, we approve. I'll make a motion to approve the proclamation. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Mosho, second by Commissioner Ebinger. Any further discussion? Any comments? All right. I think, okay. if I may, yeah, Mr. Sure. Chair, I, I think that this proclamation is very important, but I, I think it um, maybe falls short on the actual work that really did go into making sure that business was as usual during the pandemic. I know that all of the people in this room and all of the departments represented that maybe not be here really did work to make sure that they could find alternate ways to make sure services uh, were still rendered without too much of a hiccup. So um, my sincere gratitude to staff. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd just like to echo that. Um, having shown up in January being a new commissioner, I was amazed at the amount of work that got done, but that was just started. Uh, they not only addressed the needs this county had, uh, our citizens had, that were directly related to the pandemic, but we transitioned into a new gov government operations center. We made uh, the purchases and the land acquisition to get the, the new uh, uh, resource transfer station opened up. We've got a whole lot of things that were done, which were business as usual, but they were done with a huge degree of, of uh, challenge put on it because of the pandemic. So you know, they, I have nothing but admiration for them. I'm grateful we've got such good public employees here in Clay County. Anybody else? Jenna? I'm not the commissioner that does one for effusive language, but in talking to other commissioners around the state, Clay County really has it going on. We have an amazing staff, and there are so many things that I hear about regularly where other counties are looking towards us at being the leader in, in different areas. So thank you so much for carrying us through and for continuing to pour yourselves out into this work for our communities. I guess I too appreciate them being here telling us how, how to do our job, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it's, um, uh, I, I think this county board certainly didn't need Governor Walls to tell us to have a proclamation for our county staff. I think it's extremely important and well-deserved. Uh, I'm thankful that he did uh, have it for the entire 87 counties in the state of Minnesota on the same day. I think that that is a great deal. Um, you know, working closely with during this pandemic and and the CARES Act committee that we had, and and I think we saw just about every department head coming in and talking to us during that process about the difficulties and the challenges. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I firmly believe over the course of this is, is we've also learned how we can do business differently. And, and I think there's some areas where, uh, thanks to all of our county staff, we've, we've been able to think outside the box on how to uh, move things in a different direction and maybe make changes in the way we operate on a daily basis. So I look forward uh, with our, with our management team uh, moving forward to try to come up with uh, re reinventing some of our processes moving forward and I look forward to those those discussions and they've already started which I'm thankful for so once again to all of you thank you and this is a well-deserved proclamation with that I will call for the vote all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Oppose the same sign Motion carried. Thank you all. All right. Back to business.
Josh, are you handling this dis issue for, okay. Good morning, Josh. We were, we're looking at uh, a request to fill two vacant positions in the juvenile set, secure one in the, or two in the secure and one in the non-secure, is that? Correct, yep. Okay. All right, do you wanna take it away, Josh? Yes, thank you. We do have uh, three uh, vacancies, uh, two vacant positions in secure detention. Uh, one position is a juvenile detention worker. The other is a juvenile counselor. Uh, so a grade 13 and a grade 16. The vacant position in non-secure is a juvenile counselor position, uh, which is grade 16. Uh, these positions are accounted for in the 2021 budget. Overall, there will be savings to the budget after payouts for these uh, staff leaving. Okay. I do want to. I do want to say too regarding uh, some of the personnel issues, and I we did have a regional meeting last Thursday, and I intend to give a report on that during our committee reports and. And some significant time was spent uh, talking about your staff, and so I'll I'll talk about that later. But certainly, it's important that we we um, keep these, and these are actually kind of required for your staffing deal with with uh, DOC too, correct? Mm -hmm. This with the secure anyway. Yeah. Well, Let's, yeah. Both both, both units have uh, are Prius standards. Um, okay. Uh, staffing per uh, gender pods programming specific needs, so. Okay. Any questions of Josh? Okay, you have a well, request to fill? I certainly believe these are very needed positions and hope that uh, we can find the magic avenue to find more employees to fill them. So I, I uh, certainly hope that we can do that. I, I assume that we want these because it's secure and non-secure in separate motions. So my first motion would be to rehire the two vacant positions in the secure unit with backfill if necessary. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Mosho, second by Commissioner Ebinger to fill the two and secure. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same sign? Motion carried. My second motion would then be to rehire the one vacant position in the non-secure unit with a backfill if necessary. Second. A motion by Commissioner Mojo, second by Commissioner Ebinger. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carried. All right, you're ready, you're good to go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next we have a request to fill vacancy for eligibility worker in financial services. We have Rhonda and Jamie here. Yes, good morning, Mr. Good morning. Chair, Commissioners. Jamie and I are here to request approval to replace a eligibility worker who is resigning from her position. She has been in this position for about a year. She actually was an office support specialist who moved into an open position. She is moving out of the area, so we are requesting the ability to replace her and then approval to backfill should we have any internal movement. This position is manages um, eligibility in our Medicaid program. Um, she's on the Medicaid team. They manage over 12,000 recipients on the medical assistance program for our county, and so it is a position we feel uh, does need to be replaced um, to manage that caseload. So. And that's a 50%? Yes, this, these positions do receive 50% federal financial participation, so there is some funding that goes along with the position. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Any questions of Rhonda or Jamie? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gross, second by Commissioner Cayley. Aye. I have yes. a clarification yes. to the motion. Mm -hmm. There yes. was a backfill request. Okay. D did that include the? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, very good. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same? Motion carried. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Amanda. thank you. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Next. We're refilling a lot of positions here today. Next, we have uh, County Attorney Brian Melton here looking for, to fill a 
in the assistant county attorney position. Correct. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, commissioners, I, I do have a summer cold here, just very much in my throat, so um, might be a little quiet. So uh, uh, I am uh, requesting to fill the assistant county attorney attorney position. This is right on the back end of one other person that left. This individual is moving away from the area. Um, so it kind of came as a surprise. We weren't expecting that to happen. It's a budgeted position. i would be line 23 and we are looking to fill it immediately if approved. Move to approve the request. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ebringer, second by Commissioner Cayley. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. And motion carried. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Mr. Overbowl. Preston, good morning. Can you go over your budget with us today? Yes, good morning. Does everybody have a copy of the Highway Department budget? We do. Okay, good. I did meet last week with uh, County Auditor and Administrator Larson. We kind of went through the budget a little bit and uh, tried to identify high points and low points and areas that we might be able to trim if we need to and that sort of thing. And we did find one little area. There was a uh, little typo on there, so we, <laughs> we trimmed off $9,000 there. So um, <clears throat> what I'll try to do today is just go through our budget a little bit and try to explain it in detail. Um, our highway department budget is made up into four parts. Uh, first page is maintenance. Uh, the next page is construction. So that would be our engineering projects. Our third page is administration. And then the fourth page is the shop, which also includes almost anything related to our fleet and our fuel. Um, and then on each individual page on the top, maybe they're all the same, but on the very top there you got uh, the revenues that come into the highway department and then expenditures on the bottom. Uh, so with, with highway maintenance, um, <clears throat> in uh, 10 3 10 uh, state grant, that's basically just the town road funds that come through the gas tax dollars. Um, the next line item down is 5273, that's municipal maintenance revenue. Again, that's uh, municipal maintenance dollars that come through the gas taxes. Um, we basically use uh, historical trends on where we're seeing those come in. Um, and kind of use last year as a snapshot and previous years to see where they're going. So uh, our typical method is to use last year's numbers for the year looking forward. So um, it seems like it's been working pretty good. Uh, the next item, regular maintenance revenue. There again, that's um, non-municipal. So when the gas tax dollars come through, they're kind of broken into maintenance and construction. And then in each one of those are broken into municipal or non-municipal. So municipal would be in any of the small cities Elton, Ulan, Dilworth, Barnesville, and then uh, the regular funds can be expended in those municipalities or outside, but the municipal dollars have to be spent within the, within the municipalities there. So <clears throat> the other thing I just wanted to mention is 10-310-5408, uh, individuals and others. Uh, you might be wondering what that is. That's revenues from a couple shared roads that we have, and it's in the south part of the county with Ottertail County and Wilkin. So uh, roads that are on the borderline that we share, we do the maintenance on them and then they pay us back half for that. So it's not a lot of dollars, but uh, you can see we budgeted $20,000 of revenue from those two adjacent counties. And then uh, miscellaneous revenues, that's the township maintenance contract when we do work on the township roadways. So. Uh, we got $613,000, and there again, when we go through that each year, that is completely off actual cost from the previous year. So that's, then it's based on a five-year average, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Correct. Yep. And then so that's how we get our per mile rate, and then we ass put, assess that times the miles, and um, so you can see the rate did go up a little bit from 583 in the 21 budget to 613,000 in our 22 budget. Going down on the expenditure side, you can see our uh, salaries regular, which is kind of a combination of our 21 full-time staff as well as our part-time staff. We've got, I think, three part-time staff that plow snow for us in the winter. We've got three part-time staff in the summer that help count gravel trucks and help on the projects, as well as one guy, he's a retiree that comes back and mows for us. Uh, when I first started, we'd have several guys that would come back and mow, but those retirees are, we're down to just getting one now, and I think, the one that we have is probably looking at retiring again. So uh, it's hard when you have a staff of eight and you have to put four of them in a mower. And we, we mow uh, one eight foot cut or 
10 foot cut or so right around the 4th of July and that's pretty standard I think cities and counties uh, and state does that so we, we do a little bit of mowing right around 4th of July and then we come back right after Labor Day and we, then we mow the entire right away so it pretty much takes from uh, beginning of September through the end of October so you lose about half of our staff sitting in mowers but um, that's doing both sides of the road too right exactly mm -hmm. Yep. So it's 1,600 miles times two. Yeah, and we, we only mow our roads. Oh, yeah, don't do, you don't do the township right. roads. So it's about 700. So 800 miles. Right. Yeah. Yep. 1,600 miles. Yep. Our, uh, we did uh, just a little touch on our mowers. We did buy some different mowers about three years ago, I think, or so, those green Schulte mowers. Mm -hmm. And they've, they were a lot more expensive, but, while wow, they've held up really good. They've, that was a good decision. We were using bush hog mowers, and they were just, we were had a lot of problems. At one time, three of the four mowers were out. Uh, the parts were almost unavailable and it was kind of a scary situation but uh, we made a decision to go with a better mower and it's worked out pretty good for us so um, anyway back to the salaries there you can see it's uh, it is up about 22,000 and essentially that's mostly just colas and and step raises for 21 staff um, I did keep pretty much all the part-time expenses consistent um, other than that most everything going down there is pretty flat I did want to touch on, and you might have a question on uh, about halfway down, 10310 6454. I think it says uniforms there. That one went from 1600 up to 4900. And essentially, what that is, it's just steel toed boots, and then that's the clothing that we allow. So every other year, the staff get us a pair of steel toed boots. So on what we call a boot year, there's it's up to about 4900. And then next year, then it will be a non boot year, so it'll be back down in that 16 1700 range or so. So it kind of fluctuates, depends on the year. Um, the other thing that we really tried to do to, to keep constant here and try to keep our budget in check is uh, 6502 road materials. Uh, we kept that flat at 910,000, same as last year. Uh, culverts, we've been able to keep that flat for quite a few years, um, which I'm surprised because there's lots of culverts that keep, you know, years ago there's, there was a lot of concrete pipe that were put in and they, they, didn't, they weren't tied together and the ground here moves and it breaks the bells off and pretty soon water pumps up to the top. So we have lots and lots of those that happen quite a bit, but that 30,000 has been a good budget number. We've been able to stay within that. Um, traffic supplies, that's our signs that our sign department puts out there. Um, we've been keeping that at 40,000 and that's been good. Uh, roadway maintenance costs, that's any labor. If we have to hire outside labor to do maintenance and we kept that uh, the same as last year at 250. And then weed and brush control, maybe at some point we might have to think about trying to continue to up that a little bit depending on what we hear from soil and water on noxious weeds uh, that did get cut about 10 years ago it got cut way back and we brought that back up to a level that that we feel is is good but i mean there's there's still lots of weeds out there uh, i've been working with the contractor as well as soil and water and i think it's been a good progress but uh, actually i think i've got three thousand of that dollars is set aside for flood buyouts too okay so if there is any uh, any of our own properties, we can spray that. Dave, on the signs, do uh, the do we were we look going through and checking reflectability on our sign? Was right talking about doing that? Is we'll, there do you have a process for that? Is it, be are you doing a section of the county at a time, or we'll touch on that a little bit in on page four. There we do have. Okay, you'll touch uh, on it. Yep. Yeah, okay. I do have one uh, special request on there. Okay, uh, what we did last year is we borrowed the one from Cass County. And we had gotten to the board and gotten approval to replace signs. And then after the fact, went out and checked some of these signs with that borrowed reflectometer and found out that they were still good. And our sign department staff was completely amazed, but they seen the value in it. So we switched gears. Instead of replacing signs, we replaced blue fire numbers. So we, we kept the dollars in, in, in the signs, but we just, rather than replacing signs that still had life in it, we went back to the blue house numbers. And, you know, okay. And then the very last one there I want to touch on is intergovernmental payments. Uh, that one's up a little bit. And what that is, that's a sum of the expenditures for the town road allotment. It's, it's a pass through dollars. Uh, the Moorhead Street allotment that goes to the city of Moorhead. And some of that's debt repayment for 40th Avenue South, as well as the uh, dollars that we give them just for the normal uh, county roads with, that they do maintenance on within the city limits. At 40th Avenue, how, how long was that contract for? I think it's 2025. Mm -hmm couple more years I think it started off at three million dollars and then with the interest on that that carried out it must have been a I think it was right in 2003 2004 something like that when it started so. and then we've got the payment to small cities that's another kind of a pass-through thing that's 
in part of that 1.27 million. Uh, we've got some dollars for 12th Avenue Turnback. I think we've got through 26 or so on that one. I think that's 50,000 a year. So at some point that'll come off as well. And then the gravel tax that is collected that we give the share of that to the townships. That's also as part of that expenditure. So, uh, those And those are revenues that are shown uh, either at the top of this page or on the very last page, I think is, and I'll show you where the gravel tax revenues come in. So if you wanna flip to the next page on highway construction, at the top of the page is the revenues and it's pretty busy up there, but uh, there's the very first one, 10 5220 is state grant. That would be if the county had received like a local road improvement uh, project grant fund. So we, we don't have any for 2022, but we will for 2023. Uh, that county road 18 project that we just recently got the dollars for. That'll be reflected next year. Uh, bridge bonding, that's for any bridge projects that we get bo bridge bond funds for. You can see we got $589,000 queued up for 2022 for that. Um, Kassau Municipal Revenues, um, so that's, uh, I think why that doesn't show. Because we're, we're not using any. Not it's on the revenue it. side. I'm surprised you don't show it on the revenue side. Maybe it's showing down below. That's, that's county state aid dollars that come through on the municipal side within the city limits. On uh, the next page, or the next one down is regular construction, 5274. Uh, that's, that's combined CASA dollars as well as township bridge funds. If we've got town bridge projects queued up. Uh, federal grants, you can see there's 2.6 million. We do have two federal aid projects for next year, one on County Road 52 and one on 31. So uh, combined federal aid dollars that are coming to Clay County are uh, a little over 2.6 million. Um, we do have a process for that within District 4. So we, we get down, we get together once a year uh, with all 12 counties. We take a look at historical expenditures, who's received what, and then there's target values that are kind of based on size and lane miles and your CASA needs. And I, I think Clay County does pretty well in those target values. Um, so I, you know, I, w I won't be up for funds for a few years down the road, but um, you know, we get our dollars and then you kind of get to the back of the list and then you eventually. Is that the STIP? Yes, yep. yep, that's those STIP meetings, correct. Yep. And then the last one, uh, 5920 sale of used equipment. Uh, that's what we, that's where we show if we have, uh, if we do have a township bridge project that we do, they are responsible max of $10,000. So if we do three of them, which you can see we have 30,000 there, we would expect that they're more than likely would be about $10,000 of engineering costs that will get billed to the townships. And then for the most part, that's the only cost that they see. So if they do a 70 or $100,000 bridge replacement project, their cost is $10,000 for engineering and $10,000 for um, certain construction items like remove bridge that are not covered by the town bridge fund. So max is about $20,000 that they ever have to pay for one of their projects. So it's a really good program. Um, down on the expenditure side, salaries regular. Um, we are up, or actually we're a little bit down there. Uh, and the reason we're down there a little bit is um, typically we hire uh, six student workers. So we're gonna hire a couple of less student workers next year. Uh, we think we can get by with a few less guys. So that was kind of nice. That lowered the budget there a little bit. Um, we did have our, uh, we thought we needed to move up a little bit more in overtime. That's 6107. Uh, we got that up about $5,000 more. And the reason being there is our, our construction work is almost all asphalt paving and asphalt paving is long and, and there's usually a lot of overtime associated with it. So we felt it was good to capture what we expect to see there. Um, if you go down to 6271, other professional services, uh, that is, is pretty much strictly all software expenses and they've crept up a little bit. We, we always kind of look in the rear view mirror and see where the trend is there a little bit and they are trending a little up. So we move that up to capture that. Uh, the very next line item is 6274, Consulting and Technical Services. Uh, we lowered that one a little bit. Uh, we've got some consulting fees there. Uh, there's, some, there's always roadway testing for projects that we do. There's hydraulic analysis for the bridge construction projects that we do, um, as well as there's, uh, there's asphalt testing that we bring to the state in Detroit Lakes. So there's MnDOT expenditures. And then probably the biggest chunk of money there is, I think there's gonna be some consulting fees needed for that North Broadway bridge project. So put some dollars in there for that. Will the state aid in that? They will aid in the construction dollars, I'm, I'm hoping. Not, not the study. Correct, yep. 
we, we could use CASA dollars for that. Uh, we typically have never really used our, our gas tax state aid dollars for like, you know, we, we can pay our own staff with it or we can use it for consulting fees, but <clears throat> I feel like we've always taken 100% of our dollars and put it right into the, the roads, so to speak. Well, you're gonna come back next week and talk to us about the Broadway Bear. Right, yeah, next week I think I'll do a little update. I, um, City of Fargo had done an update to their council and I would like to do the same. There's, uh, there's some information that we need to gather yep. uh, from the public and we're getting real close to getting that out. So. <clears throat> Towards the bottom there, uh, 6630, municipal construction wheelage tax. So, um, what, 10 years ago or so, Kevin, we, deci we, we uh, decided to do a wheelage tax within Clay County. Uh, it's $10 per registered vehicle, and the county gets about $9.75. We literally get almost all of that dollars, and, and we put it there again, we put that money right into the roads. Uh, the city, or the county at the time, the the commission decided that it would be a good idea to share some of those dollars. So we share 30 percent of those dollars with uh, the city of Moorhead and the rest of the small cities. Uh, the city of Moorhead, you know, and that's based on population. So we kind of have three different categories. I think it was over 15,000, which would be city of Moorhead. So uh, they got a, I think they get about half of the 30 percent. And then the next tier would be 5,000 or maybe it's 1,500. I think it's 1,500 or greater. And I think there's four cities there. So it'd be like Dilworth. Barnesville, Holly, and I think I'm missing one. Maybe Ulan, and then there's six smaller cities that that share on the the final tier on that. Actually, and so those, um, you know, for for new commissioners, those those cities can can choose to bank that money for Correct. a period up to is it seven years, Dave? I think yep. we, we we gave them up to seven years to do that. Um, so a population over fifteen thousand is the city of Moorhead. Uh, the next tier is 15,000 to 1,000, and that's Barnesville, Dilworth, Glendon, and Holly. And then population under 1,000 is Comstock, Felton, Georgetown, Hitterdahl, Sabin, and Ulan. Um, so the, uh, the smallest tier get $5,000 per year out of the collections. Uh, the middle tier, 15,000 to 1,000, they get 10,000. And then the city of Moorhead roughly gets about 70,000. So. And that, those all together represent about 30% of the total? Correct. Yep, 30% of the total that we collect on the wheel attack. So um, I think the idea was the fact that they got registrants out there too that maybe are not all in certain areas. So we, we shared some of that back and it's worked out really well. I think everyone has at some point had a project that they've requested. Uh, it's maybe not enough to do a big project, but after seven years, it might be enough to at least help out a little bit. So, mm -hmm. so we've got $155,000 uh, budgeted for um, expenditures for the wheelage tax. New county construction funding, that's 400,000. That's the levy dollars for, uh, we typically have always used that on county road projects, but the last several years we've had to use that to supplement any of our projects that we've been, been doing. So we, that's, our, that's our levy dollars for construction. Uh, the next line item, 6631, that's the county share of the wheelage tax, the 70%. And then the next uh, big number down there is road and bridge construction. And that's a combination of any bridge bonding expenditures, any uh, county state aid highway projects, any town bridge projects, and any federal aid projects. So essentially, if you go up on top, and if you added up the 589,000, the 4 million, and the 2.6 million, they, it's an equal number. So what comes in goes out. So uh, next page at administration. So before we get there, uh, 40 or. 6632, um, there's a significant difference between the proposal in 22 and 21. Right. Is, is that just the time, the... It's strictly based on, essentially you can think of like our five-year road plan. So some years are, we, we, we're up to seven million there. So if you have your plan, if you look at the bottom of the blue number down there, you can see how that number fluctuates right. from year to year. Uh, probably the biggest deal is we've got that influx of federal aid so if you, you know, we don't get 2.6 million of federal aid every year. So if you pull 2.6 out of that, you get kind of close to that 4.6 from the previous year. And same with bridge bonding. You know, some years you do a lot of bridges, some years you don't. Uh, town bridge funds, again, if we've got five town bridges and previous year we only had one, that would make a difference in that number. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next page, administration. 
on the uh, revenue side there, the 1400 that is strictly those $100 annual <coughs> overweight permits. So if a business is within three miles of a 10 ton roadway, they can get a permit so that they can do business. Um, moving in utility permits is the next one. That's our, we kind of guess how many utility permits, you know, people are putting cables in the ditches or if there's a, a lot of moves throughout the year, we've been selling a lot of uh, construction permits and overweight permits. And then the next one down, 5830 miscellaneous revenue. Uh, that is our joint facility administration fees that we charge as the city and the state for our building out there. Uh, it's the administration only. It's about $30,000 of uh, Ann's salary that the, we recapture from our, our uh, partners. Um, on the expenditure side, uh, 10 330 6105 salaries regular. We're up about $6,300 there. And um, there's, I think there's six of us in there. It's uh, Justin, myself, our two office staff, and then Ann. So, with steps and cost of living, I guess that went up a little bit. Um, the next one down, 6107, um, salaries overtime, that's overtime for a highway accountant. Um, next one down I wanted to touch on was telephone, 6201. That's made up of our, our cell phone expenses for our department as well as the shop internet. So that one has crept up a little bit. There's been no change, but we just, we're, I guess must be seeing the, the cost for both of those jump up a little bit. I want to just explain a little bit on 6261 accounting and auditing. That's our uh, state audit expenses when they audit the, our, uh, our books. Uh, the next one down, 6271 other professional services. Um, you can see that one dropped quite a bit from 19,800 to 14,000. We were involved in a very large upgrade with uh, our software RT Vision. And it was a five-year, you know, they needed $60,000 based on the amount of work we did with them. We paid that over five years, so this is the first year without that. So uh, that upgrade cost went down. Um, it looks like on 6351, building insurance and liability, it looks like our insurance jumped up a little bit, about just, uh, just under $5,000. Um, the same with 6354, workman's comp. Um, those costs have crept up a little bit. And then 6604 equipment over 500. We have historically always kept that about a thousand dollars, but last year we did have a uh, some office furniture. We bought a, a new desk that is was well over 20 years old, so that that cost of that one time cost went off. So we're back to the thousand dollars we normally have. The last item is our highway equipment maintenance and shop. Uh, at the top of the page, miscellaneous revenues, 5830, that is the joint maintenance facility expenses. So non-administrative related expenses, it would be the other operating expenses that, so it was about $80,000 that we recapture from the state and the city of Moorhead. Um, salaries regular is up a little bit, $3,500. And uh, there's, we only have two staff on there, so combined for the two, went up about 3,500. Uh, I wanted to touch a little bit on 6302. Um, equipment repair and maintenance. Uh, we went up $5,000 on that. And I think what we're seeing there is we're still seeing some repairs to our plow trucks. There's, uh, in the winter time, we just have a lot of wiring issues. And I think we talked about that a little bit when we bought our new plow truck, we went with a different kind. Um, so we looked at last year's and the previous year's expenditures and um, 200,000 just didn't seem like enough. So we upped that just a little bit. Um, if you go down to 6410, fuel lubrication, uh, we did keep that flat, and every year I kind of try to work with Lori on that a little bit to guess what we're going to see there. And um, I realize the price of fuel is jumping up, but it is so dependent on the kind of winter you have. If you get a lot of snow and you're out there all the time, it doesn't matter if the fuel's two bucks or four bucks. You're just you're burning a lot of fuel. So we we took a gamble that uh, it looked like we had been under the last couple of budget cycles. So we kept that flat at three hundred and sixty thousand. Um, cleansing supplies at 9,000, we kept that the same. Small tools, we kept that the same. Uh, if you go down to 6604, that's the equipment over 500. Um, we know we last year we were at 12,000. Um, it, it seemed like when the guys need something, it's like a large pressure washer or an air compressor. It's, it's well over the $500 minimum threshold to be in this column. So we would like to jump that up to 15,000. And then to the right of that is where you'll see that $10,000. That's the uh, new request. And that is for that sign reflectometer. Uh, we borrowed it from uh, Cass County. 
Um, I've wanted to get one for years, but they're not cheap, as you can see. But the one time that we used it last this past spring, we realized the benefit of it. And I, I think rather than always trying to borrow theirs or share theirs, I think it would be nice to have our own. We could go out at any time and check certain signs, and we might find that we can keep our signs around a lot longer. And I think it's a savings for the county. Um, I guess I, I'm really, really excited about having the opportunity to possibly have one. Um, mm -hmm. When we borrowed the sign reflectometer, did they charge us for that? No. Okay. No, they were they're, they're have such good working relationship. It's I guess it's more of a convenience to have our own, so we could use it more often. I guess I think I think our guys would use it more often. Uh, we could continue that down that road. They have not said anything about not continuing to share. I guess. And then maybe the last thing to touch on at the bottom is our internal service, 6607. Um, our, we have so much high dollar equipment. Um, when we work with the auditor's office, we kind of started this internal service program kind of in the hole. So we, we've been trying to catch up a little bit. So there's a, a $50,000 increase there um, to re for the replacement of our fleet. And then maybe on the back page, there's just three or four little items there. Um, if you look at 10-805-5072, gravel tax removal, that's the $300,000 that we bring in for gravel taxes that, you know, some goes to the county and some goes to the townships, as we talked about earlier. And then the next uh, couple down, 5091, that's the wheelage taxes, and you can see that. So this is the revenue side, and then the expenditure side was on page two, but uh, the 70% share to the county is 363818, and the 30% share to the city of Moorhead and the 10 small cities is 155 922 and then right to the the very last item capital improvements 10 805 6955 there's fifty thousand dollars shown there that's our maybe you could call it debt repayment for the holly landfill shop so solid waste actually put up the dollars for that facility and then the highway department based on the share we i think our share was 60 percent based on how much size we're using in the shop and then we're just making a payment back to that department for that so Any questions of Dave? Okay. Thank but you for your update. Than I wanted, but I wanted to go through it in detail. So, if there's any questions, that's fine. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, uh, Justin. Law enforcement. Sheriff. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, we as well met with, uh, with the county administrator last week along with uh, the auditor to go over the budget to see what we could do and how our budget overall looks. Um, I guess I will just kind of dive right into it. Um, for 2022, uh, one of our larger increases, you'd probably see with the salaries. Um, I'm sorry, we'll start with revenues. Um, we did increase our revenues a bit as it pertains to um, our pistol permits. Uh, we had changed that last year to go to $50,000 uh, for 2021, but we're seeing just an increase in pistol permits again. Um, and as you can see, May year to date, we're already uh, at 52580 So uh, we decided to propose for 2022 $80,000 in revenues for pistol permits. Uh, we're also hopeful that we'll get another $5,000 from the state for police relief aid. That seems to be increasing every year as well. And then uh, the additional revenue would be $45,000 from um, our Moorhead Police Department contract for the building. On our expenditures, some of our uh, increases, again, uh, as I had mentioned before, would be the salaries. Uh, that would uh, include the 2021 requests that we had with that new hire. Um, I, I do not foresee us uh, spending the 3.2 million in salaries for 2022 because we do have two individuals that have uh, indicated they are gonna retire. So I would venture to guess that number is going to be slightly less. It's just we have to budget this way uh, because we have not seen any letters from them at this point. 
Because when we because when we did that new hire, we were taking into consideration some um, some re potential retirement, and then we looked at the possibility of still having to maybe add a position or something at that point, right? Because you originally requested two. Well, only requested one. You requested one. Yep. Only requested one. Okay. okay. You know, depending on what happens here, of course, in the court facilities and things like that, we may have to look at that, um, but we don't know what's going to happen at this point okay. with that. Um, and then that would obviously change some health insurance increases and para and things like that as well, but we do have to budget for those um, for those folks as we have them here today because we do not have any any letters from them at this point uh, and then we did have some slight increases in our association and membership dues um, they sl they went up two thousand dollars our meals re uh, related to overnight travel um, or meals not related to overnight travel sorry we've been consistently under budget there our, our number of transports have always gone up therefore we put that uh, at an increase of a thousand dollars uh, we did increase as well our gas and oil budget fifteen thousand uh, dollars we also increased salaries for our pistol permits because our office staff continues to do more and more pistol permits spending more time on that so we did increase salaries um, for that but that also would come out of the revenues that we do obtain from from the pistol permits and then the last increase that we had had was uh, we had a per mile contract with Valley Mortuary Services and that would be in 206, 206, 6331. Um, they increased their mileage by a quarter, therefore we did uh, increase that uh, line item. Again, that's 206, 6331 by $5,000. What page is that on? Hmm? What page is that on? Yeah, I don't know. We're kind of missing that here. It's, we yeah, go it's from 6302 to... 206. Top item is 911. It is under the medical examiner. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Our total increases after the revenues have been subtracted would be 232, 232,000. Again, um, that is with all the salaries factored in there, but. As I, as I indicated, I don't believe we're going to be spending that in salaries just because of the you know, retirements that, that are coming up. Any questions? Well, even if you, because you, you had talked about potentially a couple of retirements, right? Correct, yeah. And, and even if, if that did happen and those were replaced, you'd probably be at a different scale. Yeah, it'd be as... It would be a different uh, step on the grid. A different system. step. I yep. Think. Yeah, it would be a different step on the grid. So we're going from that higher step where those two individuals are at to a much lower step. So the 3.2 is kind of a worst-case scenario. I, I mean, not, not, I don't mean a worst-case scenario, but that, that's if everything just stayed as it, as it is today. <laughs> yep. Yep. And no retirements. With no retirements, correct. And if, if they do, we're looking at, you know, potentially between fifty five and $60,000 savings if those two individuals were to retire. Didn't you have one, didn't you have one that left for active duty, too, or something? Yep. Yeah, we do have one that's currently um, active duty, but his salary this year would be um, Mike Files, who is who's the deputy we replaced him with. Okay. That, that was more of a budget-neutral type one for this year. So there were yeah so there was a new hire and then there was the replacement or, or the change I, I knew there was something at the, right. in addition to the one new one that and it was that active duty issue the active duty yep yeah okay. and he would come back we're hopeful um, we're hopefully he comes back November of this year latest would be February of next year okay. yeah. um, any, any more questions or anything. Um, moving on to our narcotics task force, that is the 205. Um, our Lakes River task force was disbanded. Can you give us a page number? That's on page um, 8, right after the 911, right above the medical exam. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I think we're going out of order here because yeah. I'll let corrections and Gabe yeah. kind of 
bring up the tail end? That's okay. Um, so the 205 Narcotics Task Force, our Lakes River Task Force was disbanded by the state due to their interpretation of uh, our contract. They kind of kept moving the goalpost on us. Uh, this was a reduction in about $31,000 in total revenue for the task force. Um, but beginning in 2019, we did join the U.S. Marshals Task Force with our Street Crimes Unit. So we do get approximately $8,000 in reimbursement from them per year. And then we do have a second grant as well with the DEA. And we currently get around you know, $17,500 from them. Um, we did have to... Um, have one deputy removed from that task force this year for nothing more than um, the DEA wants those deputies over in their office, kind of butts in the seats over there, and it's very difficult to start working local uh, drugs when they're sitting over there, so we, we need to ensure that our local drugs are being worked as well, therefore um, we're going to have him uh, one of the deputies back over here you know, in our office working local narcotics and local drugs uh, rather than at the federal level. Uh, we will still have one person at that federal level to where he will um, take any federal type cases that do come up. And I am exploring a potential other type of grant with another federal agency um, if that is possible with them. So is that reflected in your numbers we did reflect that in the numbers this year knowing that that was that that was going to be that way for 2022 okay so are we still involved with the street gangs unit we are currently still involved with the street crimes unit and our our deputies still do work with them and our deputy that is on the street crimes unit is also part of the u.s marshals task force as well so he does have that that federal credential okay so a follow-up on that how has the legislation in st paul changed the ability for that street crimes unit to operate in Clay County? Yeah, it's it's definitely changed um, for us. Uh, we're still able to go to the North Dakota side and assist them with, with, uh, with cases and, and do our own surveillance over there, but they will not come over to Minnesota because of that law change. So it has it has hurt us a little bit on this side because of it. Um, we're, we're starting to use our patrol staff a little bit more, or maybe our general detectives a little bit more to assist with some of those types of, of cases. Which then you have to ask if the investment makes sense for Clay County citizens. If I mean, I, it makes sense, the street crimes, right. don't get me wrong, it's been a really good thing that we do, but if we aren't getting reciprocal aid from North Dakota, it's hard to see us have folks over there working on it, but they're not going to come over here. I think that's the argument that we've talked about with St. Right. Paul. But at some point, if that doesn't change, we might have to have some hard conversations about that investment. I, I think something that doesn't change, though, is the investigation piece, right? I mean, that still, that still goes on. The investigation piece has changed because our North Dakota entities will not come over to assist with investigations or, okay. or search warrants and things of that nature because of the law change. And it is something we will have to have to look at and see how the uh, the lawsuit plays out uh, in St. Paul. Uh, the four large law enforcement groups have filed a lawsuit uh, in regards to this uh, use of force law. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. But I'd find it very unfortunate if we couldn't still do a mutual cooperation with street gang issues. That there's a river doesn't separate. It does not. No. No, it does not, and it is unfortunate. So hopefully uh, we can we can get some assistance with this this lawsuit. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? Margo? No, thank you. Okay. Um, I'll move on to the the two hundred six. Our coroner or medical examiner again, um, just a slight increase there due to the uh, Valley Mortuary Services contract for transports. I'm going to hit one other before I turn it over to um, corrections and emergency management. And then the last one would be 251, and that would be our dispatch. Um, the 2022 budget for dispatch uh, was approved by the Board of Authority. Page 12, thank you. And uh, our Clay County share, 10%, is 508000 uh, We do get... Clay County 911 fees of 144,000 for our net share of being 364,000. Um, 48 percent of that is uh, reimbursed by our um, our local cities. How much was that? 
uh, 48% for 174,738 would be reimbursed back. And then the rest is the Clay County share for 52%. Okay. Commissioner Mugo. Thank you, Sheriff. I uh, had seen in a local paper that we have some cities that are contracting with additional counties. And um, I think it, cities have to do what they have to do to get service that they need, but I'm troubled if we have Holly and Barnesville working with Becker and Wilkin on on those dispatch services that that amount that we pay into dispatch will have to be absorbed somehow and I understand that it's probably not until the next fiscal year but what are we doing to prepare for what that may mean for our contribution yeah, we have been in, in ongoing conversations with those cities um, to try and work with them to to make things things a lot better. And I know um, Chair Campbell and Commissioner Ebinger have also been working with uh, our North Dakota entities uh, in an effort to make things a little bit better for us at, at the dispatch center level mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that our calls are getting answered and our radios are getting answered and things like that. So we do have ongoing conversations at this point. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to get some of that stuff fixed and corrected in the future so they don't have to seek other services. But even in uh, Wilkin County just acted on on hiring additional dispatchers to absorb what Barnesville's needs are. So you know, I, it seems like the, I mean, we're getting the answer from those small cities. I don't know if there's much less to work out, much more to work out if they've already taken action on that. We're going to be meeting today on it, and hopefully we'll have more answers after today. Um, we're going to have, have a discussion with our rural cities today and, and, and Chair Campbell and Commissioner Everett and County Administrator Larson. So hopefully we're going to have more answers um, after today. But as of right now, uh, I, I don't have an answer for that. Okay. Yes, uh, Commissioner Everett. Everett, yes. Yeah, Sheriff, um, on those issues, are the... Uh, the mayor's aware have you had a conversation with them about the impact this would have on a record management system their e-ticketing uh, their ability to send case files to the courts their ability to send tickets to the courts all these things are either going to take a pretty large investment on their part to upgrade other counties facilities or they're not going to be able to do that they, these routine tasks are they aware of the consequences of a decision like that? Well, I think that's going to be part of the conversation today. As I was, I was unaware that um, that Barnesville had got to the point where they were um, actually having a contract with them with Wilkin County. Uh, I know there were some ongoing discussions with Wilkin County, but I was unaware that they had gotten to this point. Are they going to be able to? And I don't see how they could do it with a cell phone, even if you if you got down to t towers, but. Uh, my understanding is any of our communities that go with another county, if someone dials 911, that's going to go to the Red River Regional Dispatch and have to be transferred to whoever, whoever they're doing business with. Are they aware of the impact that's going to have on response times? Again, I think that's going to be part of that conversation. That does happen even today with you're on the interstate. Sometimes the call does go to the state patrol and it gets transferred here or... The call goes to our dispatch center, and then this, uh, our dispatch center does transfer it to the state patrol as well. It's concerning, and I, I hope we can have a good dialogue on that. Sheriff, you can right. continue. Um, that's all I have. I will turn it over to either Justin or Gabe, who would ever like to go first. I can. That's okay with you, Justin. Go ahead. Mine is pretty easy. Um, the emergency management uh, budget does come out of an overall emergency services budget so some of the numbers are a little skewed because uh, any of like cares dollars or covid um, fund code costs and stuff come out of that so my portion of that budget um, is one hundred and ten thousand nine hundred and fifty eight uh, really the only increases in mine are um, 0.31 uh, percent to salary uh, the largest would be point or two point nine eight uh, for health insurance, and then 0.3 uh, for para, and 0.28 for Medicare. So just the, the normal uh, step increase, um, increases in, in those deals and cost of living. 
Um, nothing really changed as far as my budget line items. Um, there is one you're going to probably notice that is, uh, I think I'm at, uh, as far as what it's budgeted for, I was, uh, I'm at 327% of that. It's a $1,000 budget item for emergency management supplies, um, but we did have um, a couple purchases that were coded under there that came up as a result of the potential for um, protest and civil unrest that were made out of there that weren't budgeted for it, but um, those were regarding our drone operations, which um, are used heavily during those situations. So back in 2020, when we had the civil unrest events in Fargo and Moorhead, um, we were able to, uh, through a trial period, um, use a streaming service with our drone. So that gives us the capability to live stream the video from the drone feed into the emergency operations center or a web link can be sent out to the sheriff or incident command or whatever to do that. Um, anyways, we had a free trial on that in 19. This year, um, obviously, we didn't qualify for a free trial again, so I purchased that streaming service uh, in anticipation of that. That was a $500 annual fee. And then also, um, we had a request and a need for a uh, $1,700 purchase of a, it's a battery charger for the drone batteries. It's a rapid charger, so that, a lot, that basically gives us 24-hour operation batteries. With the amount of batteries we have, they can be charged and ready to, you know, be switched out. So the drone really is only down for the, the time frame of uh, changing out batteries. So other than that, that is really the only. Um, I, I'm over in that category or in that on that fund code, but I am still under budget due to COVID. There wasn't really any uh, trainings, travel, and things like that. So I'm well under budget for that, and that's all starting to, I guess, get going again. So next year I would look for that, you know, things to kind of level out in my budget line items there. If there's any questions for me, I can answer them. Any questions of Gabe? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Justin. Good morning. We'll start with our revenues. Um, we are decreasing 5423, which is board and care of prisoners, by $40,150. Um, we just haven't reached our projections with, with that fund um, the last couple years. What that is is boarding uh, inmates for other agencies. Um, this last year with COVID, it made it really hard to be able to board anyone. We have been boarding a couple here and there for the U.S. Marshals. Um, we've had an individual in custody, I think, for the last three years for them. So there is still some revenue. So we decreased that that by the amount. Um, so the projection for the, the 60225 that's basing on averaging three individuals for the entire year. Um, and we think that's, that's definitely doable. The concern is, is we'd like to take on more, but the concern is coming out of COVID here, we're gonna see a large increase with our own inmate population, and it's gonna be difficult to take on a bunch of boarders at that time. Uh, the next decrease, we decreased 5427 Huber fees. Uh, this is largely due to we just aren't seeing the number of inmates qualifying for work release. And so those, those work release fees, we haven't hit those projections for the last couple years, uh, even prior to opening the new facility. Just we're seeing a lot. Our population is mainly felony assaults, felony high-level drug charges. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, murder, attempted murder cases in our facility just not seeing those DWI cases and those, those low-level um, offenders serving in our facility. Uh, the next revenue account, 5431, uh, prisoner phone commissions. We increased that by $7,795 um, just to make it an even $18,000 uh, as just a, a baseline this year. Uh, when we put the budget together, we had already reached 12000 in phone commissions for the year. So uh, we felt that that estimate would, would be um, obtainable. To move to expenses, uh, we're seeing an increase of $56,591 to regular salaries, which is 6105. Um, that was just largely due to having a lot of newer officers and having more fr frequent step increases. Um, 6106. There's a decrease in part-time salaries by $24, uh, which is very minimal. Uh, health insurance, six, 6154, 
we're seeing a decrease in t by $24,000. Uh, that's largely due to the turnover in employees and the, the change in county contributions for, for health care. Uh, para, we're seeing a $4,800 increase uh, just due to, I'm sure, salary increases. and The mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Social Security and, and Medicare. Uh, 6271 other professional services uh, we're asking for an increase of fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty three dollars uh, that's due to three different things um, a scheduling software that we we use in the facility uh, it's an online based scheduling software it makes it very easy for the staff to know what their schedule is submit time off requests uh, just track track different things related to the schedule um, that would be a thousand dollar one thousand forty four dollar increase to to that budget. Uh, the next would be in that other professional services would be to Eaton. Uh, Eaton services are uh, UPS, our uninterrupted power supply system. Um, and what that is, is it gives us a backup between the time the power goes out and the generator kicks on. So we don't just lose all security electronics, all of our computer equipment. Um, and so that annual service contract with them is $10,022. Uh, this last year, it was covered by the IT department, um, and they've asked us to take on that. that. Um, it, it's very an essential piece of, of equipment that we need to make sure gets maintained. Uh, if the power does go out, and we've had quite a few, I think just in the last week and a half, we had a power outage, I think, campus-wide. Um, for that period of time between the generator kicking on and, and the the power going out that they, there was about a 45 second to a minute window if we didn't have controls over our doors and stuff like that or lost all of our computers it would ultimately eat up more time trying to restart all those computers making sure doors were getting opened and, and closed that needed to in certain areas versus there is no interruption then in that in that service um, the next increase to that other professional services would be a 45 $4,587, that's a 2% cost increase to uh, the Lakeland Mental Health contract uh, that um, supports our river project. Uh, we're very appreciative of, of the county board's um, support of that throughout the years, and it's, it's a big service that, that we would like to continue to have, and so that 2% increase is part of that other professional services. Uh, the next increase is to 6296 prisoner care. This is where all of our medical costs are paid out of. It's an increase by $56,163. Uh, the large portion of this increase, when, when budgets were put together, we had looked at, Julie and I had looked at what we had spent for the year so far in 2021. We averaged that out. Uh, that came to be about $47,600 per month is what we're spending on medical. Um, whether that's hospital bills, clinic bills, um, medical supplies for, for the medical department, our medical contract, um, medications for the inmates, all of that comes out of that fund. And so we just don't see that decreasing any. Um, we see that that will probably maintain through 2022. Mm -hmm. and so we just times that 47,600 by 12 and, and carried it through to the next year. Um, Yes. In, in fairness, Justin, you really had tweaked that by $100,000 a year prior. You had re reduced that. And so I appreciate the fact that you're trying to find what that happy medium is. And, and not over budget, but certainly not under budget because it is so important. So. Yep. And then the other small increase to that, uh, that line item would be a 2% increase to the men correctional care contract, uh, which would equal $8,296 for 2022. Mm -hmm. Uh, Justin, that <clears throat> if I can, that medical. When we pay that, do we have any any knowledge of of how many of those inmates may have, you know, because of they lose their they lose their Medicare. Yeah, we don't really track that. Who does come in with with medical assistance or, okay. or any MA, type yeah. of yeah. Um, MA? Um, it's hard to tell because 
the inmates themselves, they don't always understand that they lose that assistance when they, they come into the facility. I, I guess I guess I was just asking how, if you could track it, because that's a constant message that we send, you know, to the state and to the feds, is the fact that, you know, that, that costs the counties considerably, mm -hmm. you know, by the loss of that, of that MA. I don't know if there's any, I don't know how we, if there's anything that we can do to help us build our case uh, as we, you know, look for legislative ways to improve that. So I don't know. It's just That's something, something to keep we can in definitely mind. look into tracking and seeing how we can track. Um, probably Obviously, parking. it's got to be something you can do legally and you, questions you can ask and questions you can't ask, but okay. That's, thank you. And I do know, um, we do get MA rates for all of our uh, hospital visits and clinic visits already. We work with Sanford Health or whether it's Essentia here locally. Uh, so they, they do bill us MA rates. Um, so that does benefit us drastically. You just don't get reimbursed. Yes. Yep. That's, that's the big thing. Yep. Uh, so the next line item with an increase is 6421 uh, jail supplies. Um, this would be an increase of $14,314. Uh, and the, the large reason for this, this increase would be um, when we opened the facility, we, we had to purchase, uh, we purchased all brand new um, linens, bedding, clothing, uh, uniforms, I mean, all that kind of stuff for the inmates. Uh, we're now about three years into that, or will be when the 2022 budget comes out. That stuff is really starting to deteriorate uh, just with the constant use of it and uh, the constant need to, to wash it. Uh, so rather than coming forward every three years with a, a drastic increase, we think we would cut that into a third of what we would need and just ask for an increase of, of, of a third of that into our budget and every year it would just maintain that same amount. So really I laid it out um, in our notes what that all would would need to be um, and what we'd be purchasing. I do think we can get a little bit better rates on, on, the, on what we're buying just due to the large number of quantities and knowing what I got for rates when we opened the facility. Um, but this is what the advertised prices were for these products. Um, and so we just feel it's a necessary increase. So Justin, as I look at this, you're in the 2021, you had budgeted 31,630, right? Yep. And according to this, you've used 28,505 year to date through May? Yes. So, and that's, and that's with your population down. Yeah, so. Is it, um, or or doesn't, the, doesn't the jail population come into play here? It does. Um, you know, uniform or the, the inmate linens and supplies that I just mentioned, that, that does come out of that account, but that's not the sole thing that comes out of that account. Uh, we pay for other things such as, um, like our non-medical use gloves. Uh, so just conducting jail, daily jail activities, the staff use gloves. Um, and, and those gloves to this year, this year have cost us $23,647 of that budgeted line item. Uh, glove costs doubled this year. And now that the supply chain has, has increased again, we have not seen those rates drop. And has that changed because of COVID? Yes. And I think the, Julie and I talked about this. We thought maybe we would see a decrease in prices when the supply chain got better. Uh, we now think that everyone got used to paying this rate and this is what the, the manufacturers are just charging now. And uh, I don't see them dropping the rates. Have you ever looked at CARES for that, Steve? Uh, that's something that we could look at, Mr. Chair. And, and I wanna reiterate, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't gloves that we bought more gloves due to COVID or anything like that. It, it was just an increase in those, in that cost. Yeah. Just <coughs> line demand. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there are other things that come out of that line item. Like we pay for um, every, every offender that comes into the facility, we give them a hygiene kit. Those hygiene kits cost us money. Uh, we buy, you know, razors for them to shave with and shaving cream and all that kind of stuff throughout the year. And all that adds up to a couple thousand dollars as well as just other little small miscellaneous items that, that throughout the year just budget it to a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff. And so 
there is a little bit of money to to buy small quantities of of bedding and linens and clothes and stuff like that but to be able to replace them on a on an as needed basis uh, in larger quantities just isn't within our budget um other than that my only other increase would be a new request that i'm asking for i lost my place here that's the forty-three thousand. so for 2022 we're asking for an additional correctional officer uh, this correctional officer would be assigned uh, special duties as a court officer um, it would be an increase a total increase to our budget of sixty two thousand seven hundred and sixty seven dollars uh, that includes salary insurance para social security and medicare um, with the way the courts are going um, they're moving during all of covid we moved to an itv um, setup so all of court is being handled within the jail uh, that's not something that the jail was ever really equipped for or, or staffed for um, our responsibility in the past had always been get the inmates over to the courthouse uh, use the assistance of of the court deputies to to supervise those individuals and we were responsible for the transport of them just kind of back and forth and then uh, our staff would take notes as as available of what happened during those hearings if they were able to stay there um, we were then with covid all the hearings now happen within the facility so our staff in the jail are are handling all of those hearings with us coming out of covid now the courts are moving to a hybrid format and so it's going to be a combination of itv and in-person hearings and with two individuals two court officers on our staff to be able to do that two just isn't enough to to accomplish all those duties as well as their additional duties to take people to outside medical appointments and things of that nature so to be able to adequately staff those needs we're asking for a third third correctional officer with specialized court duties assigned okay uh, overall i think before the new new request our our increase is a 0.92 percent increase uh, after that i think it's just below a two percent increase to the overall budget with the new request any other questions? All right. Well, I think that kind of concludes your presentation today, right? Uh, I think, um, you know, obviously we're going to be looking through all of our budgets and we'll look at the new requests and, and we'll be making, we'll have to make these decisions sometime in September and let you know. And, and uh, it may be too that as we move forward, we may want to have you back to make some clarifications if we have questions so thank you thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. oh you have one more item here I, I do I actually have two more but I think there's a break in between so uh, well let's take care of both years so you don't have to hang around them for a break so let's start with your uh, request to fill vacancies for two full-time correction officers yeah, so I received two more notifications of resignation. Uh, the, their last day is this coming Friday. Uh, the individuals are moving out of state, uh, just different career paths. So I'm uh, requesting to, to fill those two positions. Uh, it is within our budget. It is part of our DOC staffing plan to fill those positions. We have a request to approve. I have a move to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Cayley, second by Commissioner Ebbinger. Any further discussion? There's not a backfill issue with these, right? No. Because they're, they're all, yeah, okay. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, you have been short-staffed for a, a while. Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit how your staff is holding up with the additional strain of being so short-staffed? It, it's been a struggle. Um, I, I know they're, they're getting very burnt out. Um, we have recently spoken with some of the staff and uh, we've implemented a schedule change uh, to hopefully alleviate that. Um, one of the big things we were hearing is our, our old schedule um, had a combination of working eight hour days and 12 hour days. Um, the staff would like more days off and so we are moving to a 12 hour workday schedule. Uh, that will give them more days off in the meantime. Um, so in a seven day period, they're, they're working seven days and off, or in a 14 day period, work period, 
uh, they're, they're working seven days not all in a row, but then have seven days off also in that pay period as well. Uh, it's something that uh, they, they really express some interest in. Uh, it's something that we've done in the past. There are some challenges with it uh, when it comes to you know, backfilling some positions because we have to meet our minimum staffing plan every day. Um, and so there are some challenges with that and we're working through those challenges. But I think in the long run, this will make staff happier, um, giving them some more time off. Um, we are, we have been recently working with the Minnesota Department of Health and local Clay County Public Health um, to eliminate our quarantine process at, at the jail. Um, we are seeing a very high number of vaccinated staff and vaccinated inmates compared to the rest of the state. Uh, the state was very impressed with our efforts to, to vaccinate inmates and, and get our staff vaccinated. Uh, so they, they agreed that we can eliminate our quarantine process. We'll still have some, some steps and protocols in place to mitigate some risk with that. Um, but with that happening, it allows us to shut down two of our housing units to be able to reduce our staffing plan a little bit so that we can, instead of saying, hey, you can have the day off, we're gonna have to find someone else to fill your shift for overtime, uh, we can now just give days off and not have to burn staff out to, to fill, fill that overtime or to meet our minimums, say, okay, guys, to get meet our minimums all this week, we need you know, X number of overtime shifts filled. Um, and that's been the big burnout, is, is just the number of overtime shifts we've had to fill. Uh, in fact, uh, myself and my assistant jail administrator uh, have been picking up some of those shifts to, to help alleviate some of that stress. So then my final follow-up is you talked a little bit about reduced revenues because we're not boarding some of these additional inmates. Uh, did the staffing crunch play into our reduction in that or just the availability? I just think uh, with the budget deductions and in, in the revenues, um, the, the boarding and care, that was a big one. Um, you know, when we opened this facility, we had always anticipated having some, some contract with, with boarding individuals. Um, COVID threw a big wrench in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then just where we currently sit with our staffing um, has thrown another wrench into that. Um, I think, you know, coming up, we, we, we are backgrounding quite a few individuals. So I do think that this is a, a very temporary thing. Um, we're, we have two individuals that are hired and coming on board and we're backgrounding an additional seven for full-time, three for part-time. So uh, we, we are getting there. Right now, what we're trying to find is how do we fill kind of the gap in between leaving right. employment and, and coming done with training. So, but as far as like the boarding or the, the Huber fees, again, we're just not seeing, seeing the individuals that qualify for work release coming into our facility and serving, whereas we did in the past. All right, any further questions? Thank you, Justin. We're going to move on to item number 10 on the agenda while we, we need, share. We need to vote. We need to vote. Pardon me? Vote. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, it was the same. Motion carried. There was some long dialogue there. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin, let's do item number 10 so you don't have to sit here through the break. I know that Steve was going to do an overview of the but we can kind of still work through that. So let's, we have, uh, if you look at attachment H. Yeah, so I can't remember if it was last week or the week before I met with the uh, American Rescue Act Plan uh, Committee uh, to, to came forward with a request to reimburse us for uh, some ITV equipment that we had purchased for court. I believe it was that committee's request that I, I was in favor of that and come forward to the full board here and request for those funds to be reimbursed out of that fund. Um, it was for a total amount of, I believe, $8,155.51. That was equipment that we had purchased. Um, it was our second ITV setup that we had purchased during COVID uh, just due to the courts moving to all ITV and courts for in-custody hearings. Yeah, so that was something that uh, I think our, our group uh, recommended. And it certainly was 100% related to CARES, or to, or to COVID, I should say. So uh, our committee definitely recommended that we should move forward with including that uh, payment reimbursement. So that's the recommendation of our 
committee. Chairman. Yes. I move that uh, that reimbursement be, be approved. Okay. I'll second that. It There's makes a, a lot of sense. Motion by Commissioner Ebringer, second by Commissioner Cayley. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. And we will take a five minute break. We are back and we will reconvene. We'll take item number nine, overview of American Rescue Plan. Administrator Larson, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, commissioners again. Uh, as you see from the agenda and the item we just had, uh, we, we do have uh, a few different American Rescue Act funding requests before you this morning. And we've had a multiple conversations about the American Rescue Act, but I just thought I'd just do a real brief overview uh, kind of, of, uh, of, the, of the process a little bit. Uh, the the uh, interim rule is 151 pages, and so I'm gonna try to condense that into seven slides. Uh, and so, <laughs> so uh, but, uh, but here we go. I just wanted to touch base, again, the American Rescue Plan was, a, was part of a $1.9 trillion emergency le legislative package, uh, again, to, to deal with COVID-19 uh, public health crisis, and also to look at uh, the potential uh, spurring the economy as we move forward. Again, we, as part of that, there's multiple uh, different categories. We had unemployment, we had uh, rental assistance, uh, we had uh, funding to families, tax credits, uh, just to name a few. The portion that, that, that uh, is impactful to us today is, is the portion on state and local fiscal recovery funds. Uh, and that uh, is part of that, that program, uh, $350 billion was set aside for state. Uh, local, uh, territorial, uh, territorial and tribal governments to respond to the emergencies and bring back, bring back jobs. Uh, when we look at those different areas, again, the, the goal was to, to have a substantial infusion of resources to meet the pandemic, pandemic responses and rebuild a stronger economy. Uh, and they laid out, just like they did with CARES, uh, they laid some, some criteria specifically uh, uh, that they could, could do and utilize the funds for. Uh, there are five, uh, but as I said, there's 151 pages that also uh, further lay out and provide feedback uh, to that. And so when we look at the, those five uh, usage uh, uh, for those funds is to support public health expenditures uh, by funding COVID-19 mitigation, medical expenses, behavioral health care, and certain public health and safety staff. Address negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, including economic harms to workers, households, small businesses, impact industries, and the public sector. Replace lo uh, lost public sector revenue using this funding to provide government services to the extent uh, of the reduction in revenue experienced due to the pandemic. Uh, provide pre premium pay for essential workers, offering additional support to those who have borne and will bear the greatest health risks because of their service and critical infrastructure sections. And then investments in, in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure and making necessary in, uh, investments uh, to improve uh, access to clean drinking water, support vital waste uh, water, stormwater infrastructure, and expand uh, broadband internet access. Uh, and, I, and I think, again, I think one of the other things when it goes back to, uh, to the state and local fiscal recovery funds uh, and what is allowed to utilize, uh, that's built on top of the first CARES fund. So the CARES fund uh, and the criteria that we are allowed to utilize uh, is also captured uh, in this. Really the goal is it was trying to widen the, widen the net here and allowing local governments to better utilize knowing what the, what the needs are in their communities and widening that net. And so, um, as we've talked about, uh, Clay County received roughly $12.4 million. Uh, we received $6.2 million of that back on May 19th uh, with the second payment coming within the next year. Uh, again, the, the, this is a little bit different than the CARES funding. Uh, we, we had to work directly with the federal government and the U.S. Treasury uh, to receive, uh, receive the funding. Uh, and uh, cities and townships uh, under 50,000 people will receive funding, but they will come through the state of Minnesota, and there's a sec separate set of processes uh, that, uh, that they'll uh, have to go through to get that. And we've touched on that a little bit during our board, board meetings. Uh, you know, one of the challenges with the CARES, uh, the CARES program, it was approved in March. Um, uh, the state of Minnesota didn't determine how, we are, how it was going to be distributed until the end of June, uh, and we essentially had from July, uh, essentially July to December 1 to, to figure out how to spend that allocation. 
Uh, fortunately for this time, the parameters are a little different. Uh, it goes back to March 3rd of this year uh, and runs through December 31st of 2024. Uh, and so uh, the funds must be incurred at that point, and, and the, but they, must, they don't have to be expended until 2026. And so we actually have about a, about a five-year window to, to completely spend uh, those funding, funding dollars. Again, uh, this board uh, has determined that we will continue to use uh, the American Rescue Fund Committee, or CARES 2 is what we ca ca call it a lot of times here. Uh, we began meeting a, a number of months ago. Uh, again, based on that time frame uh, with CARES, we were meeting uh, two, sometimes three times a week uh, in planning. Uh, I think the, the committee continues to evaluate the, the uh, funding opportunities and the guidelines that the U.S. Treasury provides, and we're really trying to be very deliberate in planning. And so um, we haven't, if you recall, uh, fairly soon into July of last year after the funding uh, was made, our, our committee came forward with some proposals of categories, uh, and, and we may be looking into doing that uh, in the future, uh, but as I, as I mentioned, the board really wants, or the committee really wants to uh, have an opportunity to evaluate. The Treasury, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, the, the 151 pages came out uh, as far as the interim rule. Uh, then they asked, then the, the U.S. Treasury provides a frequently asked questions document that, that uh, answers uh, additional questions that are brought in through, across the country. Uh, with the CARES funding in nine months, uh, there was about four, uh, there were four updates to that. Uh, and and the, the updates allowed us to do a number of things on the county level that had we, that we wouldn't have been able to do at the beginning of that process. The U.S. Treasury has already come out with four, uh, four updates to that, uh, to, their, to their frequently asked questions, which is going to be helpful in, in determining how we're able to spend, spending, spend those dollars. And again, uh, we'll be looking to have, uh, have uh, categories uh, for, for discussion at this board uh, at a later time. Again, there are reporting requirements uh, that will go to the federal government. There's also going to be a single audit uh, process that will be uh, re uh, responsible to participate in. Uh, and uh, last, at last meeting, uh, Commissioner Campbell mentioned uh, Darren has been working through both at the CARES process and also now with the American Rescue Funds and application process. That really aided us in, uh, in that audit uh, process, uh, getting all the information as it happens. And so when it, when it came to that, that uh, audit, we were able to, uh, to have all that information ready to go. And so I, I know that Darren has, the, uh, has the, uh, the application here, and Commissioner Campbell had mentioned about wanting to kind of show that to you guys. And so, Darren, if you want to come up and... Okay, so the first uh, part of the process is the form that I created for uh, tracking the funds. And what I normally do is um, put the, the, whatever is approved in here, the categories that uh, are a drop down, and these are the five things that uh, Steve just talked about. And then once you uh, select one of these, then a, sub, uh, a second drop down will uh, come down and it will give a little bit more specific um, topics that that money is going to be spent on. Uh, they would have a short description of the expenditure, um, the amount of the expenditure here, any other comments that might describe that expenditure, and then we can also upload files as required. Um, and those are usually what I'll upload is either the request for the funds and also um, the board action from the minutes. So we have that in there as well. Um, the funds can be categorized in several different ways. Uh, waiting approval, approved by board, projected partial. These I, I'm probably going to look at a little bit more because I might not need some of these, but they're there for now. And I can make changes as we go along. Um, throughout the first one, we, it was kind of a trial by error, but uh, this one I, I learned a few things, so we'll make it a little simpler. Uh, I'm not learning as I go this time. Um, and then, of course, the person that's submitting the funds, their phone number, and then the department is also a, a drop-down as, as well. And I also uh, added outside agency here as well. So once that is uh, filled out, then what it does is it feeds these charts. Um, this is the totals. Uh, you can't really see all of it, but um, this would be the first allotment of funds that we've already received. This will be the second allotment of funds. 
the total allotment of funds after we receive everything and then the total spent. I also have a balance sheet where these numbers I just put in divided it by equally by each category, but these will be um, separated. Uh, it's as just a, as an example. As an example, exactly. And then the status of funds is also, um, so the total funds, the, the remaining funds, which will give us a running total of everything. And then um, this one is awaiting approval. So the stuff that you would approve today, for instance, uh, Justin's thing that you just approved for ITV, um, that'll move to the approved by board in this column here. So if you approve everything today through Justin and uh, Dara and um, Joe, then those funds would move over. And that's, these charts are all fed by that form that I can export that data into this uh, Excel spread, spreadsheet. And so that is the tracking mechanism right now. <laughs> well, it's, I, I, we asked that it Darren be able to show this because it's it's really a good tool for us to have and it's very beneficial and also it's uh, extremely important as we um, when we approve these that we're following the guidelines and we're being able to show uh, where within the guidelines uh, the reasons for for the approval of it and why it qualified as an expenditure so yeah uh, Darren thank you for for your work on that it's an excellent tool thank you Any questions all right, Steve, are you? Yeah, I, that, that uh, pretty much wraps it, wraps it up uh, again. Um, part of why we wanted to do is, is to, uh, you know, is to, that, is to address this today is we, we did, uh, we do have some items that we're gonna be addressed, have addressed and will address here shortly. Uh, and so with that, uh, does anybody have any immediate questions? Thank you, Steve. Item number 11, we have a request for funds from the American Rescue Plan from Dara Lee with the Clay County HRA, and she is online with us, and I believe you have, what, four board members here, Les? Good morning. Good morning, one and all. I'd like to do, start this with a statement I made that three of you have heard me make many times before the two commissioner members over here have not. I worked in many volunteer organizations on a board and out of all the groups I've worked with, Darley is by far the best manager director I have worked for. And this is broadcast before and it's broadcast again. And for the rest of the presentation, she does the work. All right, good morning, Dara. So I, I may be turning my camera off if my audio is garbled. So okay. is my audio clearer this way? Yes. Okay. I'm going to leave my camera off, I said, so you don't see me blush. Um, and hopefully this will remain clear. But Les is present, as are others, in case you have any specific questions. Thank you, Chair Campbell and Commissioners, for allowing us to come to you today for this request. We did make uh, a presentation last week to the CARES 2 slash ARPA committee, um, and we are coming forward with two of those requests today. Um, they are both allowable expenditures under the provision for eligible um, responses to negative economic impacts on the pandemic. Um, as referenced before, the frequently asked questions have come out, and one of those questions was uh, what type of services are eligible. Some of the specific activities included rent, mortgage, utility assistance, counseling um, to prevent or end homelessness, as well as home repairs and weatherization. So our requests are directly um, as specified as an eligible expenditure under ARPA. Um, there is a request for $100,000 in order for help us to help complete the job of ending child homelessness within Clay County. Um, as you saw from our background materials, oh, almost half of the people that we serve are children. Um, currently we're serving over 1,100 children in Clay County, um, and those are all low-income children with a um, majority who are people of color. We also have been doing um, rehabilitation work throughout the county. 
Since 2008, we have utilized funding through the county to leverage additional resources, and we would like to continue that with our $80,000 request for rehab. So we are available to answer any questions you may have about this request, um, either through me, if I'm not garbled, or some of the folks in the audience. All right, I, um, I think we've got our, the board's attachment letter I regarding this, and you had the background information. Um, as Dara mentioned, she did come before our committee and gave a good detailed report on, on the requests. Uh, our committee uh, felt it was extremely important to move forward with two of the four uh, items that we felt were important now and, and less than Dara and those of you, I think the other two, they're still on the table. They haven't, they haven't been excluded, but because we're so early on in this process, there are some of the items there that, that we wanted to see how that might fit in with other things that we're going to do as well. So, huh? Yeah, and what the state will be doing as well. So, uh, but the, the recommendation is certainly to move forward with the one hundred and the eighty thousand uh, dollars for the two uh, one for the to help end the youth homelessness youth and family homelessness in Clay County and that eighty thousand dollars for rehabilitation in Clay County for the home I, I think that's that's an excellent program by the way I I, I wish we could even do more because it, it it ends up paying and it, I think it improves local neighborhoods. Uh, so it's got a lot of benefit to it. So uh, that one I've been excited about for a long time. I think that's an excellent opportunity for us. So, but that's, uh, you know, if the board has any questions, those are recommendations. As Darren mentioned when he showed us his process there, we're hopeful then that that 180,000 can move from a proposed to a board approved and, and move forward and then that can help the HRA move forward with their plans and start implementing uh, that work. So, I don't know if there's any other quick Are we going out with information to all the agencies and stuff uh, that there's money available? I mean, you already got requests. So how did they get on the approval? Well, they, already? yeah, I mean, they obviously different agencies probably are aware of, of the dollars and, and, you know, Steve can add to that, but, um, you know, our intentions are to still, and that's further discussion about knowledge. What it, you've asked questions before about how do townships know and all this type. So we're, that's, an, that's another thing that we're working on right now through our committee to help the education process. Thankfully, we don't have a six month period of time that we have to spend all this money this time. So we can, we can have the time to do it correctly. But do you wanna add on to? Uh, Mr. Gross's question. Sure, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Gross, I think that uh, in this case, I think uh, many agencies are being directly contacted by either the state or by their their like the HRA association contact DARA uh, to notify them. And so a lot of those, a lot of the early conversations that we've had uh, have come because of uh, either uh, notifications, uh, conversations that we've had as committees or their local associations have, have reached out to them and made them aware that there aren't the direct allocations for them, but there's the potential availability through through the county. Is there a limit on an application? Like, if someone comes in, they want five million dollars for a project. As do we? Uh, uh, I mean, I realize you're going to look yeah. at that, but uh, yeah. uh, is there a limit on applications? I mean, and then and if they do put in for a million, five million dollars, do you say, okay, we'll give you three million or two million, whatever? I mean. Is there a limit on anything like that, or? Well, I, you know, I, I, I think, I think the limit that we have is twelve million dollars, and and you know, so, I mean, if if one project came through that was so important to the county, you could probably say the whole twelve million could go to that one deal. But that's highly unlikely, obviously, okay. to happen. But but I don't think there's a, a set dollar amount. Uh, I I think we always meet, need to make sure that that. Everybody understands that there are multiple needs, and and we're not going to be able to uh, solve everybody's problems 100%. But we're going to try to spread this around the best we can, based on the guidelines that are presented to, to us by the federal government. Well, I guess just not being on the committee, we 
I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, but there, there's no. I dollar. talk to people. What do I tell them? You know, just put in whatever, and then you guys are going to decide. That's right. How much is they, they get? You know, and I yeah. just. Uh, uh, so, so, Mr. Chair we, we, and Commissioner Gross, when uh, you know through the CARES process, for for example, we 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 had a number of agencies that one specifically reached out to us uh, as part of our committee. Uh, and establishing uh, the funding requests or, or the categories that we are that we're uh, as a committee feel are, can be the biggest impact for for the bucks uh, we have reached out had our staff reach out to different agencies uh, and then those agencies then come in uh, with a with the presentation some of them have are asking for one thing some of them are asking for multiple multiple things uh, and then what we do as a, as a committee then after that is, is we evaluate uh, the, re the request uh, and then and then we make a recommendation ultimately to this board in determining uh, what we feel would be the best to move forward with. So. I guess my main concern is, you know, we're getting $12 million, and I would definitely hope that we're going to be able to find place for this $12 million, that we don't send anything back to the state, you know. Oh. They're giving us the money. Let's let's utilize it, you know. But I, I didn't know, do you wait for all the requests to come in or... Uh, Okay, now you start picking away at it and picking away and uh, uh, disapprove some requests, and then later on you find out, hey, I still got $4 million to give away here. So I just. Uh, uh. So, uh, you know, Commissioner Gross, oftentimes government can be accused of operating slowly. When it comes to spending money, I don't think there's as much worry about how, about the speed of spending the money. So, um, and again, there's there's plenty of needs going out there, and I think the most important point is that our committee takes the time to get as many requests in as possible and see how it fits in. Well, we as a county, are we coming up? Is there a committee as a county, or, or are we just telling each department to come up with something? Uh, I mean, I see Justin came up with something. So is each department working on something, or is, there a, uh, is your management... Uh, meeting or whatever mr. mr. chair commissioner gross we've we've had ongoing conversations just like we did with cares with our with our uh, management group uh, you know with the, with the new changes we've made them aware that uh, there's you know some oh, maybe a wider net this time so uh, if in the event that they have items that weren't addressed in cares that they could potentially look at that and so that is that is something that we do uh, constantly talk about and I'm I, sorry to drag this out on oh, stuff like that but I'm just trying to get information on that. No, I, I think, you know, uh, when we when we got into the CARES, you, re, you recall we, we established different categories. And then uh, through the process of that, we kind of allocated certain dollar amounts to each category. And once that category, once you filled it, I mean, that was... The, but you had a time limit. You had to have your applications, right. applications in by a certain time. Right. Here it just looks like, well, this started to trickle in a little bit, and we'll start using some of these funds so and and maybe if i if i may in in your in your um, information that dara uh, presented uh, why we felt that uh, specifically the hra um, issue was important to bring forward uh, has to do with uh, with uh, you know the the hra has the ability to levy funds through the county at with your approval uh, and uh, they're in the process of, of establishing their budget for next year. There certainly were some impacts to, on their budgets, uh, just like the, everyone that COVID had. Uh, and, and so uh, in looking at this fund request, this would have a uh, have a impact that they've indicated that if we were to approve this, uh, it meets the criteria. They wouldn't be looking to come to us for a levy uh, this year and further impact the citizens. So that that's why I guess we brought we felt uh, the importance of bringing this forward uh, as quickly as we did, uh, and so it, it would have uh, some pretty immediate impacts both for the county and for for the HRA. I mean, I agree, and I agree with this request. I mean, it's just I've got no problem with this yeah. request. You know, just you know, but if people don't know yet that I can request money, you know, and they say, okay, now we give away, well, this one would be one hundred eighty thousand. You know, uh, are they going to have a the next person going to say, oh well, we already gave away the money. Uh, yeah. Too bad you were too late. You know. Yeah, I, I think we're going to do our best to notify uh, anybody who might be able to be qualified for relief um, as a result of COVID. But you know, it, you know, if you look back to the 
to the first cares and uh, you know our goal at that point in time a as it should have been first and foremost was to help keep our businesses uh, operational uh, if you even recall our proclamation today it, it, it talked about the significance of, of the work that was done through cares to make sure that our businesses saw the relief from being shut down and now we have we have some of these other components that are coming up it's going to be a long process in this and and um, we're gonna we're gonna have some more dialogue about getting in depth as to what you're talking about Commissioner Gross and that's how, how we can get the word out on on the availability of this so that that's to come we've we've had those discussions we had in our last cares meeting uh, that we had so but I think you'll you'll find that some of your answers will come soon as far as how we're going to handle that. Okay. Any other? I know it's difficult when we. Oh yeah, Commissioner Mosho. I think part of the issue, thank you, Mr. Chair, is that we make sure and um, and do it as as fairly as possible. And we've talked about this with the CARES Act. Uh, thankfully, this round we don't have the abbreviated timeline like we did before. And so we're being deliberate and having conversations with entities and organizations that do the work within the county uh, to evaluate how COVID affected them and to make sure that we can help our community move forward out of the pandemic as, as swiftly and as effectively as possible. Um, you know, that you talk a little bit about is there a committee to evaluate that? that that committee that Commissioner Campbell and I were appointed on really has had those conversations to make sure we're identifying areas and then that may be an issue and then making sure staff is following up with them to see if there's any needs areas. That's a little bit of, of maybe how the request from our jail administrator came, came out is that they had identified after the fact that they needed to make sure and, and get those ITVs so court cases could be heard uh, um, effectively during COVID and then had uh, cost needs because of that. But, you know, we certainly, if you as a commissioner are hearing from people that there was an issue that maybe wasn't addressed or a need area that, that wasn't addressed, make sure to forward that to Steve and then and we can talk about that at that committee level. But that's kind of the the um, sounding board that we've got organ organized to make sure we're addressing concerns. Now, I've got no uh, complaints or anything about it yet. I'm just, I'm trying to acquaint myself with the sure. system right it's now. Well, I, I, I think Commissioner Mojo said it right. I think if any, any of you as commissioners uh, do um, even get some questions asked of you, even if, you know, I think it's appropriate to share that with Steve. Steve puts together our, our meetings that move forward on, on the Recovers Act. But another, another thing that's really important that we're gonna be looking at is we're talking, right now we're talking about this $12 million, but there are, there are significant other dollars that are available in different ways through both the state and federal government that, that people may or may not go through us on, but they may qualify at the, right through the state level or through the federal level. So we're trying to still get our hands on all of that stuff and, and you know, we're, we're maybe gonna look at getting somebody that can help with that research on that as we move forward when you're talking about that significance. So that's yet to come. So, so there might even be some opportunities for people who may not qualify at the county level, but they could at the federal or state. We just don't have all those answers now. But, but going back to what you talked about from our county managers and all of that thing, I think there, there has been some discussion. And, and as you know, being on our capital improvement committee, one of the things that we're requesting here is 900 and some thousand dollars of things that are going to be, that we're going to act on after this one that are definitely related to uh, American Recovers that it's going to save all of our county taxpayers on at the same point in time it's going to, it's going to, help deal with some other COVID related issues. So, so we have had that dialogue amongst uh, our managers and, and, and Joel will be given a, a facilities report on that next. But 
So back to this, I don't know, Les, or if you have any comment. I think uh, we certainly, our committee certainly supports the request right now. And I would look for, uh, unless there's any more questions on that. Do we need two motions? I think you can incorporate it all into one. Then I would move to approve both of these items for $180,000. Second. A motion by Commissioner Cayley, second by Commissioner Abinger. Any further discussion? Just to comment, can I? Yes, Commissioner Moore. I appreciate the board's support of this. I, I know that the committee really felt that this was something that was important to get out of in front, as has already been said before, but specifically to um, be prepared in case as children go back to school in September uh, and as um, eviction moratoriums seem to be ending or not ending kind of in, in jumble that uh, the HRA is prepared to um, intercept any um, needs that may arise because of that. So I appreciate the HRA for being flexible and having a multi multi-step approach to any approval of these funds, but also being ready to help our youth as needed. Thank you for those comments. And I, uh, based on the outcome of this, I do wanna say that again, those other two items that were requested through Dara's letter, through your, through your board, uh, those still are on the table. They'll, right now they'll be considered pending moving forward. So there's, you know, just so you're aware of that, it's not, there's no, denial of it by any means, but it's just the process that we're going through right now. So any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion carried. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Dara. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me to appear garbled and remote. Have a all great right. day. Yeah. Thank you. You too. All right. Next request for funds, American Rescue Plan, Facilities Director Joel. And that's attachment J. Yes, good morning. Uh, just to follow up, I guess, on this theme that we're talking about here. Um, um, it was a good time and a few weeks ago. We, we approved the capital improvement plan. And at that time, we had approved that plan uh, with the, um, the red items that are in your attachment uh, spreadsheet. We've taken those out, and, and they clearly qualify for uh, American Rescue dollar uh, funding. So. Um, today, I guess I'm asking to approve those projects in the amount of 953750 um, to be approved through those funds. Um, just important to note that uh, I'm asking to approve these, these uh, but I'll be coming, <clears throat> if approved, I would be coming to the board individually, which each project, you know, because we have procurement policies with quotes and bids and stuff. So, so just asking to approve this plan today basically the second half of the capital plan. So. All right. Commissioner Cayley. So to clarify, we're just approving the plan. We're not actually approving each expenditure. Uh, what we're doing is he's requesting that we approve the $953,750 to be allocated from- From the, those ARPA funds. From the ARPA funds. That's, and, and then he'll come back individually as each project, and as a matter of, his first one is the next item. Exactly, yep. It's actually the next yep. item. So, so he wants the overall to complete our plan because otherwise if we didn't do that, these things are still gonna be important and we'd have to go back and relook at the original capital improvement bond request that we have. Yep. Thank you. So the funding is a different source. So. I hope that answered your question. All right. And what's the board's wishes? I'd like to make a motion to approve these expenditures. Okay. We have a motion to approve 953750 out of the American Rescue Act funding for projects, qualifying projects at the county level. Correct. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Ebinger, second by Commissioner Gross. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oppose the same sign. Motion carried. Okay. And then we'll move in. Joel, you're gonna you're requesting to move forward with the courthouse heat pump replacement project. Yes, I'd actually want to add to that too, um, uh, Mr. Chair, that it's it's a tower, courthouse heat pump tower replacement. So just just to add that in there is that's what it truly is. Um, 
And like I say, this one in the very beginning was, if you recall, one of the critical projects that we had kind of set aside in the very beginning before the bonding was even approved. Uh, and so anyways, that was one of these critical projects. I'm here today with two quotes. Um, this project is, is uh, clearly, clearly connected to the ventilation system, which there's clear language in there that that's qualifies for American care dollars. So um, I, I'm requesting to approve it. Uh, we're springing a lot of leaks up there, so we'd like to get going with that project. I have two quotes, chiller systems at 70,496, 50 cents, and I got Dakota Plains Mechanical at 59,750, and I request to move forward with the project using Dakota Plains Mechanical. Any questions of Joel? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the request. Second. Motion by Commissioner Mojo, second by Commissioner Ebringer. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same. And motion carried. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. All right, item number 14, request from owners of r &H properties to refund credit penalty paid for late payment of taxes. Mr. Olson, good morning. I'm sorry for the delay in, in this. We, uh, we kind of had a bit. Well, your appearance, we're not asking for enough money. We're, uh, yeah, we're. Uh, we, you guys are big spenders. We, we, we had a busy morning, and there's a, yeah, yeah. Um, we're Bob and Helen Olson. We've been farmers and taxpayer over in the Holly area for early 60s, I guess. 60 years. So uh, we, 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 we think we've paid a lot of taxes. And uh, then we, the city talked to us about development, one of our quarters. And uh, farming was a hell of a lot easier <laughs> than developing. but. It has turned into a nice development, at least we think. Got to, uh, I invite you to come down and drive through there, any of you, when you get a chance. Uh, but anyway, in the fall of, of uh, 2000. 2020. 2020, 2020 yeah. <laughs> uh, somehow our check got lost. The taxes. Uh, the taxes. Uh, and uh, sometimes I even bring it up because it gets pretty expensive uh, when you had a lot of lots. That, uh, and I used to bring it up here, but, you know, we were running into that COVID thing, and, and uh, <clears throat> so we decided, well, we'll put it in the mailbox. And Helen and I do remember driving down and her getting out and putting it in the post uh, in thing. The mailbox. And all of a sudden, at the end of October, then we were balancing our checkbook, and oh my gosh, that check hasn't been cashed. So I talked to the treasurer's office and talked to the post office, and the post office started investigating and still haven't heard anything. And uh, I talked to the treasurer's office, and they said, well, just to make things simple, why don't you pay the penalty? And we'll talk to the commissioners later. Well, <clears throat> it got delayed because we run into the COVID thing. And then I started having some medical problems of the first of the year. So that's why we're kind of late. But what we're asking is if we would reconsider that penalty that, that we paid. And uh, I don't have no proof that I put it in the mailbox, except. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason that, that I always well. say, I'll, sorry, if he turns, he turned left, and it, it's just easier for me to run over there and put it in there. And I, I remember that. I don't remember everything anymore, but I do remember doing that. Commissioner <laughs> uh, Mojo. Thank you. So, anyway, our request is that if uh, you give us credit, we did pay the penalty. We paid the tax, and we paid the penalty. <laughs> yeah, but if you consider a credit because we don't think it was our fault and I'm not blaming you but uh, we turned the money over to the government you know <laughs> with the mail office or your office and uh, I don't have any proof but uh, that's what we're asking all right 
Commissioner Mojo. Thank you. Thank you for that, Bob and Helen. Thank you for coming up here. I don't know what's um, more impressive, the fact that you remembered walking to the mailbox or that you balance your checkbook two week, within two weeks of writing a check. <laughs> because that, that is certainly something that I am not great at. Um, Mr. Or Steve, do you know what the penalty amount was. Yeah, the, the check the amount that was paid was uh, $1,115.68. Was that all? The, what's the penalty what's amount? The penalty? Uh, yeah, that, that's the penalty. That was, that's that the, was the, the penalty. The whole amount is the yes. penalty. Yeah. Okay. Well, the okay. whole There's, amount was something like 15000 or something like with that. The, oh, okay, with the tax, I got yes. you. So that, that is the penalty amount. I, I, I think in, I think in, in fairness, the way our, our board has handled this in the past is is we we do consider waiver of penalties. However, we don't. We have never done the interest. We have never, never done what? We've never done the interest. Oh, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's that's going to be a very, very, very yeah, yeah. Small, small amount. amount but I just so just so you were, the policy has been to deal, you know, under qualifying circumstances, the waiver of the penalty portion. So. So where you where you have down here the one thousand one fifteen sixty eight in this in this attachment L, I you know I would I would so enter, the, I would entertain a motion to to waive the penalty portion of that well, whatever and, that is. And where I was going for that, I I don't know if you need the motion to include what the total would be because because it was such a short amount of time before the Olsons found um, out that it hadn't been cashed. I would assume that interest. Would be small. So my another, another point is though is that was interesting. I mean the, the penalty was assessed on the fifteenth of October, five hundred dollars or whatever it was, and then again fifteen days later. Yeah. At the first of the month. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, it well, the, the 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 fine uh, was assessed within fifteen days. <laughs> That's and like you said, it's lucky that, uh, that uh, we balanced our checkbook when we did. Agreed, agreed. So um, we realize that uh, we don't have the proof. It, yeah. So where I was going, I certainly, um, this would, I believe, fall within because of the pandemic, but also because um, he, um, Mr. Olson, had a request to come before this board before the first of the year, at the first of the year, had some health issues that they were going through. So I would make a motion to approve all of the penalties on their um, request. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Moshe, second by Commissioner Abringer. Any further discussion? I got just one comment on the thing. It just. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I'd be more a bit cautious as far as the reason I say October the twelfth was a federal holiday. There was no mail service that day, so uh, you know, future I guess leaving mail in your mailbox overnight and stuff like that is problematic probably. But uh, uh, that was a federal holiday that day. So, all right. Well, next time we're gonna drive up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well. well Uh, way down. <coughs> away that. I well, I used that green envelope, <coughs> not very heavy paper. <laughs> yeah. I can see it going through some sorting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Your request is granted for the penalty <coughs> portion. And, and I would Appreciate note, it. I would note, uh, Mr. Chair, Lori Johnson is watching the board meeting, and she said the figure of one fifteen, or one thousand one fifteen sixty eight, is all penalty, no interest. Okay, very good. Wonderful. All right, and so you had set in a credit, so that will be actually returned to you. Whatever works. All right. Yeah. Those dollars will be returned to you. Yeah. And we could have added a couple zeros if it had been <laughs> Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for your consideration. Thank you. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for thank you for coming today. We uh, we invite you to if you're in the Holly area to drive out and take a look at the yeah. development. All right. Uh, Looks we've nice. We've got about 80 houses in there now, and uh, we're looking at adding 60 more lots. Okay. So that helps the treasure. Yes. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, we, uh, we're gonna kinda have to see if we can do a condensed version of our committee because we are running late and we have an insurance meeting to take over this room at 11. So if I can ask, uh, I'm gonna, Commissioner Ebbinger, I'll start with you this morning. In your committee reports. Um, Thank you. Um, on Wednesday the 21st, I had a couple of diversion authority meeting, meetings, uh, the finance committee, uh, as well as public outreach outreach committee. Um, the public outreach, we had a report. We're trying to sink the uh, new P3, the Red River Valley Alliance, uh, sink their communications, media releases, and everything else with that of the, of the Diversion Authority. Uh, on finance, uh, had a some MOUs presented that we discussed that were going to be part of my report on the main uh, on our on our uh, diversion authority board meeting, which I'll get to in a minute. Later that day, and I'm sorry, I'm following down the 22nd. Uh, we had the West Central Juvenile uh, Center board meeting, which I'm going to defer to. Our chair, I know he has some things he wanted to cover and we were at the same meeting. So I'll pass over that. And Thursday the 22nd had a Diversion Authority Board of Directors meeting. Um, we discussed closure on the 3P contract, uh, which should be in August with financial contracts in October. Um, General Counsel Shockley uh, presented an alternative dispute resolution board uh, proposal which has been tabled and we approved a land exchange uh, for upstream mitigation area and that uh, oh and then monday myself and uh, commissioner kaylee both met with uh, mayor carlson of moorhead discussing some upcoming issues and that completes my report All right. commissioner kaylee um on Tuesday the 20th, I attended the Adult Mental Health Local Advisory Council. Um, we got reports from a lot of the different mental health providers in the area. Um, it was noted that uh, Lakeland Mental Health currently has zero people on the wait waiting list for Rule 79 case management. Um, mobile mental health is looking to hire. They continue to be quite busy. Um, CCRI currently has a waiting list for um, arms due to uh, staff turnover there. On Wednesday the 21st, I attended Immigrants, Refugees, and Local Government Outreach in rural Minnesota. It was a webinar put on by um, the Center for Rural Policy and Development. Um, they shared some interesting ideas on different ways local governments have reached out to their immigrant populations to make sure that they have a voice in local government. On Thursday the 22nd, I attended the CAPLP board meeting. The main item on the agenda was to go through the audit and um, no material weaknesses were found there. One change noted is that now, um, as they receive multi-year grants, those grants will be um, noted as income in that first year on the on the date received. They won't be spreading that dollar amount over the if you know if it's a five year, they won't be spreading it out over those five years. So when you look at their um, revenues and expenditures, there you'll see some more fluctuation, but um, it's because of that. Um, and then attending the the meeting with the mayor, as Commissioner Ebbinger noted. That concludes my reports. Thank you. Commissioner Gross. Hey, Tuesday, uh, we had our PIC uh, Personnel Issues Committee. Uh, two items were discussed there. The extension service was requested an extra additional help um, or the move a position from ha half time to full time. Told them to make that part of their budget request. Uh, the next item we talked to about was remote work policy, and I think we've got a lot of work to do in that one yet. So uh, um, that'll be coming forward yet, and there'll be more discussion on that one. Uh, Thursday, I attended the legislative update that uh, Senator Eakin and uh, um, 
Markward and Heather or gave in that there was a good update on what happened what's what has happened so far uh, in fact uh, Jenna was there also with me that there. there they discussed the what they did the last year 250 million dollars was added to hospitals and to the workers uh, border city uh, tax credit uh, continued on and the enterprise zone in the border cities was discussed clean air emissions were discussed they, they indicated that it was held off till the next governor election but I see in this morning's paper it looks like he approved it already so uh, uh, can't go by that I guess so um, there'll be a bonding session on the on the flood protection and there's gonna be tax relief in 2022 because uh, they feel they've got a budget surplus so there may be a tax relief in 2022 and then uh, last night I attended the Dilworth City Council meeting. They had a hearing on the 7th Street uh, um, project that they're doing. It's a mile long road that goes through Dilworth that uh, they're working on. And a lot of discussion, a lot of people there talking about that project. And um, my, that concludes my report. Thank you. Commissioner Mojo. Thank you. I et attended the July. Uh, meeting of the Red River Water Management Board, uh, business as usual, but we did have a update from um, the DNR on fishery habitat goals. Good work happening in, with that organization. That evening I attended the July Planning Commission uh, meeting. We did have four applications for new solar, um, solar energy um, Farms, so we did approve those and then had one CUP and then three additional IUPs. Those did pass all of them. I attended the land management of the diversion authority meeting last week. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm pulling up my notes. Uh, really good meeting, continuing to hear property acquisition updates. Uh, we did have a, a discussion on a uh, alternative dispute resolution board and uh, that resolution board uh, would be a sounding board of a uh, several 14 different member entities that would um, take um, disputes that landowners once the um, the project is in operation if landowners identify different areas that they may have not been fairly compensated for or something got missed it would be a avenue for them to dispute issues uh, with a maximum dollar amount of up to fifty thousand dollars and uh, from my perspective would be a great avenue for um, resolution and dialogue that would avoid court cases uh, that uh, did was recommended with only one vote in the negative to the diversion authority board I did watch the diversion authority board and uh, it was tabled at that it's my uh, understanding that all of the recommended organizations are people that are willing to work fairly and advocate for all of our landowners and I feel like this is a really good um, a really good step so it's my hope I know two of you are on the diversion authority it's my hope that you will continue to advocate for all of those um, member entities specifically because they have an acute awareness of the needs that arise with our um, hydrology in the Red River Valley uh, other than that, had good updates from um, both the Cass County Joint Water Resource Board and MCC JPA. The next day I had the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. We did have a good update from our um, Solid Waste Department on all the, the different activities going out, the construction out at the landfill is, is wrapping up and, and looks great. Uh, had some discussion about uh, Minnesota, uh, the MC, MPCA, uh, specifically talking about our grant that we were awarded and um, the additional hoops that have been added to jump through in order to get those funds so since this board has made a significant uh, commitment in dollars to make sure that our solid waste transfer station is is funded it's my hope that uh, we can work through any kinks that may be uh, to get those funds pipelined swiftly I attended the um, Essential Health had a, a community health needs assessment 
conversation with community stakeholders. I attended that meeting and I looked, I was going to forward it to all of you, but I do see that you were all added into uh, the email as well. Important information from community partners. I did forward that to Metro Cog as well as Matt from our planning and zoning because I think there are um, nuggets of that that we can apply to our own plan as well. Yesterday I attended the Lakeland Mental Health Center uh, Board of Directors meeting. Good updates uh, specifically from both the Otter Tail and Clay County Collaboratives as Commissioner Kaylee had talked about. The access indicators uh, continue to show favorable access, um, but uh, there are a couple different issues at uh, other local sites that we're dealing with in terms of access and then did talk a lot about the referral agency and um, client survey results. Uh, yesterday I attended the uh, solid waste construction meeting, uh, transfer station on the site there, talked a little bit about some of the the changes in terms of um, uh, codes that we've talked uh, needing to add in and, and have made a couple different changes. Um, not anything that would affect the building delivery, but some areas where we can save some dollars. Um, and then talked about the timelines that will go forward and um, then uh, talked about 15th Avenue that remains closed, I believe, as of today. I'm hopeful that that will open up. We will need to have some uh, sit-down conversations with uh, the City of Moorhead, but also Public Works, or uh, and Moorhead Public Service. <laughs> that, there we go, Moorhead Public Service in terms of uh, Clay County was uh, fixed the issue that was not identified, and uh, we'll need to figure out who's going to reimburse Clay County for doing that. Fair. And then last night traveled to Hitterdahl. Um, as you recall, the board was very um, adamant about making sure that rural, uh, rep, uh, rural residents had an opportunity to attend in-person meetings. So uh, Metro Cog and our planning department was in Hitterdahl last night to uh, discuss any issues that people may have on the comprehensive plan. Um, it was, uh, the attendance was a little light, but I'm Still thankful that we had that opportunity. Tonight uh, at 6.30 to 8 o'clock, we will be having another public, uh, public comment opportunity in Barnesville at the Watershed Office. Uh, please attend. You don't have to attend the entire thing, but just stop by and provide your feedback. It's really important as we move forward to see what the goals and wishes are from county citizens. So that concludes my reports, Mr. Chair. Sorry Thank I tried. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our insurance committee is going to run a little late. Well, I tried. All right. Well, that's not your fault. It's, all right. So on, on the, the 20th, as Commissioner Gross talked about, we did have a, a personal issues committee. Uh, two items were on there. One was the request from extension, and it's a new request. And so we, you know, obviously we told them that it has to be considered along with every all other new requests that we have moving forward. I know they're anxious to, to sign a new three-year agreement. Uh, there's no recommendation yet from from uh, the PIC committee regarding that. There was certainly some questions. Uh, we heard uh, we got a proposed uh, remote work policy from the Strive Committee and I think your management group. Uh, after listening through that, uh, we uh, kind of sent it back, saying it's kind of not ready to come before our board yet. So um, more to come on that. On the 21st, I had several meetings. My first one was a Prairie Lake solid waste meeting. Uh, the item of note that's of significance was we, we did approve a new insurance policy that has been a headache for us. And our, you know, as you know before, our past premium was about $513. And now we're, we've got a new new policy that has been proposed that's going to be uh, 223000 so a significant savings uh, on an annual basis. So, uh, and we still have to pay MCIT 268000 for the first seven months, and then the remainder of the year will cost 93195 for a total of 361000 for 2021, and we had budgeted 370 so, or actually, 470 for 2021. 
but it, it's looking good for 2022. We have some really opportunities there for savings. Land management, and by the way, the uh, I mentioned that the operations manager last time, you know, kind of quoted saying everything's going so good, all we're doing is burning garbage. This time he did say that it's the first time he, that he's gone on vacation and has not received a call. So the plant is doing really well. So, <laughs> so I told him I was going to share that with you guys as well. Uh, the land management, uh, the diversion authority was also that public outreach was that day. I'm, there's not a whole lot there. There was just planning for future markets with the P3 group and their outreach team. Um, Commissioner Mojo talked about the um, dispute resolution board. Actually, the reason that it was tabled is there's, there was questions from members from Fargo and Cass County regarding one entity that's part of the 14, and that entity happens to be the uh, coalition from down south, and they're, they're the only entity that is, isn't a formal government entity. Um, so there are some questions regarding that, and, and should they or should they not be on it? I know Commissioner Mojo mentioned 14, but each dispute um, would have a three-member board, and there were some concerns about, well, might, might that member from that entity be partial to what claims might happen in that area? But that would be in the southern embankment area. The, the fact of the matter is, is uh, any of those claims, that person would not even be eligible to serve on the three-member committee. So, so they, can, they could be on it for, for other claims, but no, nothing within their area. And, and that's, that's written into the mm -hmm. dispute resolution policy. So, so more to come. We'll see what happens on that. Uh, it's been, you know, it was tabled as, as suggested. So we, then on um, Thursday morning, we had the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. I think there's been a good discussion on that. I'm not going to go into it anymore. Uh, we had the West Central Regional Juvenile meeting, and the, the big item was the budget proposal for, for uh, 2022. And we did uh, approve the recommendation moving forward. And, um, and we were able to, within that process, we did authorize the credit of 1221000 from 2020 that were revenues over expenditures to help reduce everybody's every member's rate for 2022 and so with that clay county's number uh, after the credit the credit for clay county was three hundred seventy eight thousand dollars and so the amount steve that will need to be budgeted for for our share of the regional facility is seven hundred and fifty seven hundred and fifty five thousand five hundred forty dollars i i'm not exactly sure how that compares with 2021 but uh, I think those numbers are here somewhere but I'm, for the sake of time I got to move on uh, we had the MCC JPA board and um, we approved four appraisals and we approved two housing differ differential payment appraisals and then at that same day that afternoon we had the diversion authority meeting and uh, we talked about the dispute resolution board being tabled and we have the uh, communications plan with the red river valley alliance group that's going to come in august and um, there also there was some discussion regarding m state and the apprentice apprenticeship programs that uh, through the P3 contract, 15% of that, of, of that contract requires apprentice work. So that's a positive thing for M State uh, coming out of that. Uh, that's something important for this side of the river to recognize that. Uh, and then uh, we had on Monday afternoon, we had the construction update from on the solid waste project. I'm not going to go into any more details than what Commissioner Mojo did. And then I did also travel last night to the um, meeting in Hitterdahl. And I will not be able to attend that one tonight. But um, that concludes my report. Yes, Commissioner. I'm sorry, I forgot one. 
Um, on Wednesday the 21st, I also attended the Moorhead Business Association meeting. Um, the presentation was from the class Cass Clay Land Trust. So I went to that because housing continues to be such a big issue throughout our region. Um, the Land Trust provides qualified home buyers a subsidy to buy down the necessary mortgage and lower their monthly payments. And then in return, the ownership of the land on which the home is located is retained by the land trust and leased back to the homeowner. Um, so what the idea is with the land trust owning this property and entering into a long-term lease with the homeowner, it gives more people the ability to have a home. It's kind of somewhere in between a rental and a standard home ownership. It's just another tool in the chest. I thought it was an interesting concept. And they were saying that um, the estimated average subsidy is around $50,000 um, for those. And they are working throughout the Fargo, Moorhead, Horace, Barnesville, Holly, the whole area here. Thank you. All right, Steve. Hey, Mr. Chair, in the spirit of time, I will skip all the meetings that you guys have already addressed. I'll just note that uh, we spent a significant amount of time over the last week uh, working with our departments and Lori uh, with the, with uh, in regards to the budget. Uh, this morning, I did just hand out uh, a summary of the 2020 tax levy by funds. Uh, we're still in the process, obviously, of running through our departments. We have our, some of our biggest uh, biggest departments to come yet, uh, but I wanted to get the, uh, get this uh, information out in front of you, uh, kind of in preparation of some additional discussions. Uh, uh, I know the, the, the net levy increase number isn't something that uh, you guys are going to be good with, and so we're going to continue to work uh, work on that. I would note just for your information that uh, it doesn't. Uh, this budget uh, does include a, a six hundred thousand uh, dollar placeholder for insurance increases, uh, fifty five hundred thousand dollars in step increases, one hundred sixty eight thousand uh, dollars in new operational costs brought on by the government center and the DMV locations, uh, and it does include uh, the five uh, five hundred thousand uh, dollar bond payment on behalf of our, our capital improvement. Uh, uh, fund that this board has approved. So we did uh, just get uh, our, our county program aid. Uh, it's by statute, it's uh, required to, to be here by August 1. We did get that yesterday. Uh, we we uh, got a little, little increase uh, over uh, 2021. Um, uh, and again, uh, net levy increase or new construction increases is, is in that range where we've been uh, consistent 1.28%. Uh, again, just wanted to get this information. There's, there'll be a more of a formal, uh, formal process uh, as we uh, as we vet uh, through the remaining remaining departments. Uh, but wanted to get this information to you guys. Uh, and uh, just two other things. If you know behind Darren, uh, this past uh, this past uh, summer, uh, we went out on a road tour, and, and part of our road tour. Uh, was uh, was a tour from Chris Bakegaard from the FM Diversion. Uh, during that uh, that session, he handed out a uh, real useful map to kind of talk about where the projects uh, from the diversion are going to be in what year. Uh, we worked with GIS to kind of upgrade that, and so that uh, was in the back of the boardroom. And then one thing I did fail to mention today when we talked about uh, honoring our employees, again, just a reminder, uh, we are going to be having a uh, a Clay County Appreciation uh, Picnic sponsored by this board uh, and our management team uh, on August 24th, kind of as a, a delayed celebration for all the great work they've done. And that concludes my report. We're done.